ਨੂੰ ਦੇ ਸੂਟ ਕੀ ਕਰਨਾ ਸਰ ਠੀਕ ਹੈ Hello and welcome to the War on COVID Challenge Crowd Challenge Finals. Uh this is our uh sixth War on COVID pitch contest and the first one that was preceded by a crowd uh funding crowd challenge. So we've got the top 8 teams here today. Uh based upon judge reviews 9 teams. 9 teams. Nine yeah, teams, sorry. <laughs> top 9 teams here today. Um which is less than we were doing before. We we're doing about 10 10 per pitch contest, but uh we had intended to do less actually than this here, but we just couldn't decide so we're going to let the crowd decide the judges decide um so uh so so this is a, a mid starter or mid starter momentum type event and one of the things that we see that happens at these events is that the startups get traction and attention from the judges from mentors from other people watching in the crowd um so there's a ton of people actually I don't know how many people are watching now but I know on Facebook um Ben Choder was watching Ben runs a pretty big company he used to have a great blog uh uh um syndicated uh radio show on healthcare and done a bunch of stuff but people like that and Eugene and Dr. Martinez um are people who really you know have really good insights into which startups are going to do well and then if you win these contests uh the big prize is um in this case that the Med Starter Venture Fund will consider uh investing in your company and accelerating your company and bringing out you out to our network Um so this works really well um and we can talk about that um but uh that's the basic idea today so we're going to do four minute pitches with four minutes of Q&A from the judges if you're in the crowd we also invite you to uh put your two cents in and and into the chat boxes um if you think that you'd like to be on the judging panel and actually ask questions um especially if we know you so guys like Ben or Francie Grace or people who come to these contests that we know and we trust um their knowledge and judgment um in these things so we've had you know hundreds and hundreds of people who have been on our stages and on our panels and that we know really well in healthcare we call them sort of mentors so they come to our events all the time and might be you know in the crowd like Ben is today um and uh and so they will see the idea and and um and we'll make it involved or may reach out to the panelists and we ask everybody to judge because we know that everybody who comes to these events um has some pretty interesting experience in healthcare whether they're a designer, a developer, hospital leader, physician, nurse, uh activist, patient, um everybody, you know, has a say in who wins a med starter contest. Anybody who wants to fill out these forms we're more than happy to read um what you have to say and to use that as part of our judging. So um I should probably go through this deck, right? So um so what is the Med Starter Momentum World Tour, what we call the Medmo World Tour? Well, typically we go around to you know 15 16 cities a year and we run pitch contests and we run crowd challenges like this for sponsors like the city of new orleans or the american medical association this year obviously we're not doing that quite as much because we can't travel around we can't do in person events but this is our seventh virtual event and before covid hit we had been in nine cities already this year had done uh one in miami had been in san francisco um and then of course stopped in DC and and um Charleston and a bunch of other places on the way to Miami um that would uh that were uh, to meet with different partners and investors and folks like that so um we had been doing uh we had been planning on going to South by Southwest in New Orleans we'll go to Barcelona Berlin uh Denver San Francisco but I don't know if we're going to get to all those places but we will keep on doing these events uh and we've actually had more attendees at the events uh online than uh than we would typically would have had offline so we've had about 2000 or so attendees at the seven virtual events and the live event we did in Miami I think we had 110 um so you can do the math on that it's higher than average um which is great and then we also get a lot more uh, judges engaging and people engaging online so um all of this helps the startups get forward faster that's what we started all this for is actually uh with us today is Eugene Brokovich who actually started the meetup group which met started grew out of you'll hear more from him and about him in a minute um but the whole idea here is that we want to help startups get forward faster now in 2017 we also became uh venture capitalists we started investing in the teams that would win the contests 
but at the end of the day, we're really just very startup friendly uh, venture fund. We're really trying to do what we can to help these startups get forward, um, to get the partnerships, get the right people, um, and to be ready for that moment. Um, so we do a lot of coaching, a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one time, uh, and even staffing. I mean, we put somebody in place at, um, at one of our, our startups, somebody started out as a med starter mentor that we had introduced them to, and then they hired her. And then when COVID hit and their business grew a hundredfold, a hundredfold um, in just uh, a few months, they had somebody who was ready to do that. So that's just a, you know, one of, you know, hundreds of stories of things that we've done, you know, to help our startups uh, that we've invested in and ones that we haven't invested in. So, I mean, it's all about the startups. Um, so we've been doing this, you know, uh, going around since, you know, 2016 was the first event we did outside of New York. Um, I'm sorry, 2012, uh, we did one in San Francisco, but we really got serious about it in 2016. And since then we've done 26 cities. Um, and we usually, as I said, do, you know, 15 or so a year. Um, but, it, but they're all kind of the same, right? We all want to get the best ideas in front of as many people as possible and then ask everybody what they think. And then we use that to help us figure out who we should spend our time helping. Um, so this is the, 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 uh, the plan for today. We're gonna do some judge intros, then we're gonna have a pitch contest, then we're gonna do a little dance break uh, where Patrick, say hello, Patrick. Hey, everybody. Can you guys see Patrick? Patrick, um, uh, he's awesome. Um, we'll uh, will lead us in a in a TikTok dance break, um, which we have uh, written out for you here with all the different moves. So it's uh, it's called the number one baby. If anybody wants to go study that ahead of time, hashtag number one baby. That's what it is. And these are the moves. It's the one that starts out like this. If you remember. I don't know. I don't know how many people have been watching TikTok. We've been watching way too much of it, obviously. Um, so uh, so th this event and this series is underwritten by our venture fund, that's our venture partners. Uh, we invest in companies that, uh, that do well in these contests. Uh, it's a pretty unique model for a venture fund. Uh, I think it's, it's a better way of doing things. And so the track record and data seems to show that. Um, so that brings us uh, right ahead to the judges. Um, so can we see all of the, is it whoever's gonna be talking is going to show up as the speaker? No, you guys stop sharing your screen. Like stop sharing my screen, really? Oh, for this part? Yeah. Eugene, <laughs> introduce yourself. Me? Me? Sorry, Sorry. we're we breaking up. Really? You guys, can you guys hear me okay? Just make yes. Sure. Was my audio breaking up the whole time? No, no, no. Just, just when you, I thought you said Eugene, but I wasn't sure. Okay. So, well, anyway, if, if there's an audio problem, please tell me because we'll, we'll let you know. Uh, so Eugene Borovich, uh, as Alex mentioned, uh, started back in the day. New, it was used to be actually called New York Healthcare Technology Meetup, then Health 2.0, and then it took over from there when when poor Alex took over years and years ago. Anyway, uh, serial intern entrepreneur, spent time at big corporates and now back, uh, but also my own startups. And then now uh, back with my better half, Marina, driving Your Coach Health, uh, which is a marketplace between uh, health coaches and health services companies and part of Met Startup Portfolio. Our, our ninth company that we invested in. So we're very proud and happy to, uh, to have you helping us here, Judge, and, and I'm Deeply grateful for everything you've done to, to help uh, make bald guys look good. No, I mean, to help me do what I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're two of the three members of what I call the notorious TBG, three bald guys. Um, so, um, so anyways, not that there's only three bald guys, but we all started meetup groups about the same time. And then Eugene started running uh, Bears Innovation and the other guy was running Johnson & Johnson's Innovation. So they were pretty impressive and I was just running Red Starter. So I just wanted to associate myself with those much cooler bald guys. So hence I created the hashtag Notorious TBG and they reluctantly didn't complain about it. So anyways, that's the no real complaints. <laughs> and we are kind of notorious as we did used to smoke together. So we don't do that anymore. 19 days quit Eugene, 19 days. C congratulations. Thank you. I'm gonna stay on top of you, man. Cool. 
Okay, so uh, so I'm just going down uh, the, the the column here. I see the next judge. Actually, Pat, can you introduce yourself? Because you know, sure. Uh, my name is Patrick Kurt. I work at MedStarter. I'm Alex's intern. Uh, it's much more than an intern. Yeah, I pretty much do everything that he doesn't want to or <laughs> needs me to figure out how to do. Um, He's awesome. He does websites. Yeah, and, I you know. help with the due diligence program. I set up the contest. I try to promote it as much as possible. Best intern ever. Okay. I, I think that, that covers it. Yeah. Anything else you want to say? Favorite color? Green. Green. <laughs> That's good. I like green too. Okay, Heather, uh, you, can you introduce yourself? Yes, hi, my name is Heather DeLeonardis and I work more on the venture partner side to um, help raise money and handle the logistics of the fund and the interaction between the two entities and also try to help Alex however I can. <laughs> She's awesome. And my favorite color is green also. Wow. <laughs> okay, so uh, I guess let's go across this uh, screen. So Dr. Martinez, college friend and also a physician, we studied for the MCATs together a long ass time ago. He did slightly better yeah. and went to med school. I didn't. You can take it from there, Marty. <laughs> All right. So, John Martinez, I'm a primary chief physician in Northern California. Um, previously, the Marty, you're breaking up. Co-chair for the Dignity Health Regional uh, Digital of this Med Starter um, content. <clears throat> Could you hear the rest? Do I need to repeat? Uh, I didn't catch much of that. I think it, uh, so if you want to do it again, go for it. All right, guys. So John Martinez, a primary care physician up here in Northern California. Uh, I've been previously been the uh, physician co-chair for Dignity Health of Northern California for their Digital Innovation Committee. And looking forward to being a uh, uh, judge for this contest. Very cool. Um, I don't know if Aline made it here yet. Uh, it's great to have you again, John. It's always good to have real clinicians uh, who have been on the front lines. Ah, Aline is here. I'm going to unmute you, Aline. Hi. Hello. So I'm, I'm Aline. Um, I've been working in this space for um, like nine years. I, uh, I love working with startups, helping startups to grow. I'm based in Barcelona, I mean, in France this summer. Um, yeah, and working with different different organizations on different projects, but always related to, to helping startups grow, like innovation and healthcare related. Aline is one of those people who truly gets this on a deep level, has done so much stuff, she can't possibly be summarized in a sentence or two, but she has also been a tremendous uh, partner and, and aid in a lot of things we've been doing for years. So thank you, Aline. Thanks for participating in our reindeer games as always. My pleasure. Yes, it's great to have partners like you. I don't know if Dr. Parajuli made it here today. Is, is Sunita here? Is Sunita in the house? Uh, no, she's, she's still treating patients. She's got like two wards full of COVID patients that she's medical director for, but she weighs in on a lot of these projects. She's one of our mid of mentors here in New York um, and is uh, somebody who's been running by to make sure it makes sense for for COVID, another uh, physician. Um, I don't think Dr. Wu is here uh, today. I think he didn't confirm, right? Um, so I know uh, Atisha Patel is biomedical engineer extraordinaire, startup girl, and now going to be unmuted. Maybe let me unmute you, Atisha. How come she's not unmuting? Oh, unmute? hello. Hi. I think I was unmuting while you, I mean, I, I think we were doing it at the same time, yeah. but I am a biomedical engineer. I'm based out of Philadelphia, <clears throat> um, and I run a health tech startup called Nodicare. Um, we bridge a communication gap between physicians and patients' family members by giving them real-time updates on the progress of the patient, and <clears throat> I just got introduced to MedStarter earlier this year. And she's been a, it's a great help in, in uh, judging a lot of these Warren COVID contests. So, and that's, I mean, that's a big thing about our mentors. Is they're, they're people that we know and, and trust the thinking of um, and have very diverse backgrounds. So um, people like Aline and I, you know, while we're not medically trained, uh, you know, we've been inside and outside the healthcare system 6,000 ways. 
you know, a teacher is an engineer, Eugene uh, was a programmer, coder, CTO, you know, clinicians. Um, so from, from all walks of life, um, you know, not just traditional pharma people or medical device people or investors, uh, a little bit of everything here. So what other judges do we have here? Uh, Jeff and Cooper. Oh, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Speaking of programmers and such. Although, I, can I make fun of you for having an AOL address still? Is that, is that legit? <laughs> oh, of course I can. He's on mute. <laughs> Jeff, take yourself on mute. Yeah, I'm uh, brand loyal to uh, Stephen uh, Chase. Um, oh, God. Uh, Stephen <laughs> Chase is uh, here in uh, Northern Virginia and uh, hard to get, get rid of that. But I'm the founder of CooperSoft, which is a uh, mobile uh, health uh, company. We develop uh, mobile apps. We developed one called Asthma Win, which teaches patients how to manage and control their asthma using a smartphone. And we also are in the diabetes maternal space, helping uh, moms who have type 2 diabetes to manage their diabetic uh, symptoms and their prenatal visits and then getting them to breastfeed uh, as soon as they deliver. So that's um, Cooper saw. Fantastic. And Jeff's got a ton of experience um, building stuff on a contract and for his own ideas. You know, so he's, he's, he's been in the space, knows what he's looking at. Um, okay, any other judges? Now, is, is Katie, Katie, I Darlene. see. Darlene. Pardon me? Darlene. Oh, Galen is here? Yeah, you and Cyrus. Oh, hey, Galen. Galen? Yeah, she's on mute still. Okay, now you're um, unmuted. Hey, Galen, can you introduce hi. yourself? Yes, um, I'm Welcome Yelini Sanathi Raja. I'm um, faculty at University of Pittsburgh Medical School, and I'm a researcher in informatics, especially improving the design of electronic health records. That's great, and it's great to have you here. And thanks for helping judge online, too. Uh, so your views. Um, OK, so who are we missing? Uh, Katie, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Um, well, my name is Katie. Uh, I am a um, second career MD. Haven't started residency yet. Uh, I have uh, an invention or two of my own that one I got a provisional patent for, and um, I haven't started pursuing yet. But I mostly just like to hang out with you guys and have interesting conversations and go to a dance party. So. <laughs> See, the, the funny thing is that I thought you were a another community member named who goes by the name Virtual Katie, but then when I saw your face, I knew you weren't. No, I think it is me. It's just, I just don't look the same anymore because I have dark hair and oh, and that is I, not fair. <laughs> you change your name, you change your hair. <laughs> oh, right. Right. No, yeah, it's, just, it's probably me. You still have my disco ball, or one of my disco balls. I do still have your disco ball. Yes, I do. Good. I'm sorry. Hey, hey, that was a great party, though. So just yeah, anybody party. who hasn't, wasn't there, uh, we've run three healthcare revolution events, two of which were called Dance Dance Healthcare Revolution, the first of which Katie came to and made the party uh, hop. Let's just see. Um, so when she took the disco ball, I was completely fine with it. Um, she had earned it. So then we got another one. So anyway, but that's not today's event. Today's event is all about war on COVID, and we should probably get to that. Let me see if I have any other slides here. Is there, are there any other judges here that, um, uh, that uh, we haven't mentioned? Okay, I'm gonna take that as a no. I'm just scrolling through and seeing if there's anybody here. Oh, Rob Delian Artis. So Rob, do you wanna introduce yourself? I'll take you off mute for you. Or maybe I won't, I'll try to. Oh, it's up here, right? Nope. Okay, well, I don't know if he can take himself off mute, but Rob Delian Artis, as you might notice, has the same last name as Heather Delian Artis. Together, they represent uh, uh, a large investing group in the MedStarter Venture Fund. They were also among the first investors in the fund. We also grew up together. Um, but he's uh, one of the MedStarter Venture Partners that works closely with the teams. Once we invest in the company and we go through 
the kind of things that happen in startups, his deep experience uh, in sales and in interpersonal relations and managing and negotiating is so incredibly valuable um, when negotiating with the 800 grand pound gorillas of healthcare and supporting our entrepreneurs. So he is, uh, he and Heather are, are amazing to have uh, on the Minnesota Ventures team. It really just deepens our bank strength and it adds skills that I just don't have. Um, so, uh, so I'm very proud and happy to have him here, um, even if he can't talk. Um, what happened? He's not unmuting. I bet his he dialed in. It's his location. He can't talk. Uh, oh, it's loud. Okay. Well, I can introduce Rob all day long. Um, and I'm always appreciative to have you guys here. Um, so let's see if there's anything else in here. So for those of you who don't know anything about MedStarter and what we are, so as we were saying that Eugene had started this thing called Health 2.0 New York City, he actually a different name before, um, and then he, he and then it became the first of over 200 chapters of this Health 2.0 thing in cities all over the, the world, which now got bought by Hims, and the, a lot of the chapters are still around, sort of. I don't know, whatever. Ours is still around. We didn't change the name, but in 2012 we opened up a website called MedStarter.com to help uh, startups get crowdfunded. Uh, and then we started running contests um, later that year and our first healthcare revolution event. Uh, and, uh, and then in 2017, we finally figured out that we're supposed to be a venture fund. So now we're Minnesota sort of Ventures as well. And we invest in and accelerate the startups that uh, do well in our contests, contests like today. Um, so uh, we've got lots of mentors who do amazing things. Uh, you, you'll meet, you've met some of them already. Um, uh, your coach is our latest investment. Thank you, Eugene Brockovich. Uh, special thanks today to Pat Hurd, my brother, John Fair, Robin Heather, and Avi Shah always. Um, and as you can see, we sponsor this ourselves, so there's no other sponsors today except Mr. Starter Ventures. Um, we do have other general sponsors that we uh, work with in lots of other situations. Uh, so when we uh, invest in a company, uh, these other organizations also invest in them. Uh, it's a little out of date, actually. We got to take some of these off here. But Amazon, MedPal, mm -hmm. Venture Out, and uh, some other companies, uh, Cohen Resnick, Carter and English, all have parts of the package too. So uh, that takes you to uh, this, which is the judging form. So did everybody see the judging form uh, already? If you haven't, go to the chat box, okay? Or um, I guess there's no really easy way to do it. You got to go go to the chat box, and I don't know if you can see it on my screen here. Um, and click on that, and that takes you to the, uh, the, the judging form. Now, I will say, if you are a team in the contest, please do me a favor and just skip your own um, section. But we do want to hear what you have to say about everybody else's, okay? Why? Because we know that as startup founders, you know this business. You've been through the ringer uh, in a lot of cases. Guys like Dinesh, I mean, you've had like three or four different startups while I've known you. Um, and several of them successful and some exits and things like that. So, so you're all judges that I value, um, you know, uh, that we value as MedStarter Ventures and, um, and to help to learn from. Anybody who fills out uh, their form and submits it at the end, you gotta submit it at the end. We will, and make sure you put in your address and your t-shirt size and if you want the girl version or the boy version. Um, uh, uh, please, this is the shirt. This is actually the 2019 version. 2020 version, I guess we should stamp it with canceled or something. But, you know, <laughs> literally these arrived like, you know, 10 minutes after COVID uh, lockdowns began. So it's not like we could do anything about it. Um, anyway, so anyway, you put in your email address and your name, tell you what, tell us what you are in healthcare. So I'll, I'll demonstrate. Um, so, and it should just autofill with everything anyway. Um, so I'm a patient activist. An investor, whatever. Um, and then is it okay to share your thoughts with the team? I'm going to say always hit the next button. Okay. Do not hit the, hit the um, back button in the browser because then you'll lose your information. So you'll see that once you get to the individual uh, pages, so this is the first company coming up. So this is Light Sprite. Uh, Swati uh, is, oops, it's not in there. Is it in the other one? Anyway, so uh, Usually this has the name of the presenter, but it just has the name of the company. And there's six basic areas we want you to judge on, right? And you have to do this during or, or right after that team goes, because you're not gonna remember it later, right? So on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest, one being the lowest, 
you know, does this have a clinical benefit? Do you think that this could have a big impact clinically? Do you think it makes sense clinically? Now, I know not all of you are going to be great at that, but, you know, give your best guess, or if you don't, if you're not sure, just skip it, right? Uh, feasibility, the likelihood that it's going to work, you know, so somebody, you know, has a, a compound that they think is, you know, great because it works on frogs, that might not be feasible, right? Um, innovative, have you seen this before? Is this different? Is it special? Um, fundable, right? If it was your $10,000, would you give it to them? Um, scalable, how likely is it that this is going to go worldwide? And, you know, you might not think it's important, but the actual quality of the presentation is something we want to know what you think about. Because honestly, if it doesn't, if it can't be presented cleanly, nicely, and it doesn't have legs, then, then, then that's going to affect how, how well it does. Because not, even if you have a better mousetrap, especially in healthcare, it doesn't necessarily mean that the world's going to beat a path to your doorstep, right? So um, you kind of have to make it beat it there, you know, on its own. Now, all these projects are also live on MedStarter now. There is a blog post um, uh, on the topic on uh, medstarter.com uh, slash blog, I think. Um, uh, we can pop the link in the chat, which actually gives you links to all their projects on MedStarter, where you can see the kinds of things that happen to support the projects along the way that helped them get here today. Um, Okay, have I, have I missed anything? Okay. Nailed it. Six so, times the charm. Six times the charm, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, are there questions before we get started? Um, you know, I, I, I don't know if I told them about the form four. Okay, so you get, each team gets four minutes, okay? Your, our timer is Heather, so pay attention when Heather, Heather, do you have a noise that you're gonna make when they're done? Um. That's it's over. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> well, can you quack like a duck? Do you have 30 second signs? What are you going to do? I, I brought my kitchen timer. I could try to do this. Oh, you got a kitchen. Is it going to go like ding at the end? It has a ding, but it's very faint. But I'll try to do that and then say, also say thank you. <laughs> okay, so so when they have 30 seconds left, why don't you just say 30 seconds? Uh, okay. Alex, I have a question. I'm sorry. Uh, will you move forward the slides, right? Okay, so um, as most of you probably no, um, and Pat, do you want to talk about what, how we're doing the decks today? Oh, um, so if you didn't reach out to me that you wanted to run your own, uh, oh, I have it for mine too. Oh, they, oh I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you didn't reach out to me, you wanted to run your own uh, decks, then I have everyone's decks saved to the computer, and I can run through it for you. And if you want me to move to next slide, just say slide or next one. Like, okay. Next. Next. Okay. Next. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Thanks for covering that. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, what we'll generally do, so you get four and four. So you get four minutes to pitch. You're going to be cut off at four minutes, okay? Um, unless there's some sort of technical difficulty from our end. Like, I know one team is, like, playing a video. Um, if that messes up on your end, it's still part of your four minutes, right? So my name is actually Alex Fair. I do try to be fair. I try to be, you know, fair in this contest. So you do only get four minutes. And if you screw it up, then, then that's, you know, your time. Um, uh, if we mess it up, then we'll give you some more time. Um, or if uh, one of the judges asks your question the last two minutes, then we we'll, might give you some more time. So we, we try to, you know, keep it, keep it fair in terms of the total amount of time that you get to talk and things like that. Um, why? Because, you know, obviously if somebody talks for 10 minutes and somebody talks for seven minutes, it's, not going to be fair, right? Um, so uh, we also ask the judges to ask really difficult questions. Um, we don't want, you know, just softballs. Um, so this is part of our process to help us figure out which companies we let into our accelerator, which companies we're going to give our money to, give our investors money to, give our time and effort to. Um, and just in the, the history of this is we used to try to help everybody as much as we could. But honestly, that's not a business model, and we kind of went out of business doing that. So we reformulated in 2016, opened our fund in 2017, and now this is a, a, a viable, good business. Um, and it helps us do what we love doing, which is helping startups. Um, okay, so uh, so now have I covered everything? Yes. Okay, any other questions? Okay. If you're in the crowd and you want to ask a question, so if you're watching this show, okay, and you're not one of the panelists up on the, up on the screen, um, please uh, put your questions into the chat box. 
Pat will be your voice piece, voice, and he'll go through the questions. And if we have time, he will ask those questions. Uh, sometimes in the time when we're changing slides or moving things over. So, um, so you might save those for the end. Um, once again, judges, don't hold back. And it, judges, if you have to leave early, just make sure you go to the end and hit submit. Um, you'll still get your t-shirt. Um, uh, once again, I can't say this often enough, do not hit the back button on the browser. If you do have to go forward or back, please use the, uh, the forward and back buttons on the bottom. So this back button, not this back button. I don't know if you still can see my screen. Um, okay, so should I stop sharing and let you share? Yeah, well, it's SWAT easy. So SWAT to you, you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, so this is every, these are all the judges and panelists. I don't know if you, does everybody see everybody now that I stopped sharing? So thank you everybody. Now later when we're gonna be dancing, that's what everybody's gonna be seeing. So uh, that's gonna be after the fifth presentation. Okay, so now does everybody have their judging form open uh, and ready to do judging? Yes. If you, anybody needs any time, just put your hand up and say, stop, stop. Okay, I'm gonna assume that nobody needs um, great. Uh, except I need to go find it. So I'm going to stop, stop. Because uh, I like to be ready as well. Okay, I am ready. Um, so timer, are you ready? Heather, thumbs up. Ready, I'm ready. Cool. Okay, so Swati, go for it. You have four minutes. Thank you, everybody. Hi, we are incredibly excited to share our work with all of you today. And a special thank you to Alex and team for creating this opportunity for us. So we know video games captivate. Can they go one step further and improve health? LightSprite builds games to help people manage chronic health conditions. Clinicians and players rely on our data insights. Our traction, hold on, let's, oh, here we go. Our traction includes launching and establishing validation for our mental health video game, CineSprite. Determining the economic impact of our clinical results, validating the reimbursement pathways, and securing strategic part, uh, investment from strategic partners such as Bayer Pharmaceuticals. With minimal sales optimization, we've realized revenue, established a robust sales pipeline, and are now receiving an increasing number of inbound requests. CineSprite is a clinically validated game-based self-help mental health tool and it supports the emotional as well as the clinical journey of the chronically ill. We are a trusted support pillar during their greatest hour of need. It is the first to win a video game to win a U.S. Surgeon General Award and the only one recommended by payers and clinicians today. CineSprite is based on Bandura's social cognitive theory. The game's protagonist, Sox the Fox, becomes a Zen master by teaching patients a unique combination of evidence-based treatment methods and mindfulness strategies. SOX is very important as it addresses the patient's emotional needs. In a clinical setting, we have worked with a range of diagnoses. The data insights from our clinical dashboards have already helped clinicians remotely monitor patients and deliver customized care beyond the clinic walls. And this is a, even a more important capability beyond, with COVID-19. We collect a unique player-generated data set that includes text, video, voice, and audio. We can construct digital biomarkers and build predictive models that can identify at-risk patients. Independent studies conducted by the Ohio State College of Pharmacy and Madigan Army Medical Center have clinically validated CineSprite. Health economists at the University of Washington determined these clinical results have an economic impact of approximately 17 quality gains and primary care providers could realize an additional $22,000 in annual revenue per 1,000 patients. We've won over 20 Global Health Innovation Awards, including recognition from these organizations. We are considered one of the leaders in digital therapeutics and digital health. With COVID-19, the need for mental health support has dramatically increased. Tools that can extend care outside of a clinic and enable remote care delivery are in high demand. Our trusted self-care tools and unique patient data were changing care even before COVID-19 and have proved more valuable since. And these are an example of some recent journal entries from players. We help individuals and frontline providers with their anxiety, depression, and impacts of isolate, from isolation. Since March 10th, we've, re we've seen over 500 individuals organically download CineSprite. Two clinics have used, started using our clinical monitoring solution. 
our key engagement metrics, such as active users and sessions per week, are showing a 3 to 5x increase. The following are the differentiators that our customers have identified after they have evaluated our product. Our pre-COVID pipeline, based on our pre-COVID pipeline, our five-year target was $15 million. 30 seconds. We're driving innovation in our go-to-market strategy pre-COVID. Our core customers were providers and payers. Bayer's support included accelerating these conversations. Post-COVID, we are now receiving interest from employers and a robust consumer demand. I'm going to skip through these um, projections because they were pre-COVID. Um, we are fundraising. If you are interested in learning more, please come talk to me. Um, use of our proceeds will be applied to further product development, complete key hires, and build our evidence base. We are leaders in the f new field of healthcare entertainment. We wrote Nike's first wearable technology patents, managed the largest portfolio of mobile health apps for the Department of Defense, managed data science teams for the State Department, and built consumer-facing experiences for global brands such as Xbox and American New Greetings. Life that was gets great. Thank you very much. Four minutes. Yeah. That's great. Uh, fantastic job. Um, sorry to cut you off a little bit there. Um, I will add, um, if anybody wants to download CineSprite, you can find it in the App Store. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to try it. Um, okay, so now we have four minutes for Q&A. Um, and uh, I'll start off and say, hey, Adele. if you have 15 seconds, what would have you said? 15 seconds more. If you want to use it now, you can use it now. Uh, and it'll just cut into your last four minutes. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, was just, I was just closing out, but that's fine. Okay, so then Eugene starts your four minutes. And Eugene... It definitely. I, did you support her when she was when you were at Bear? Absolutely. I mean, we did have a democratic process uh, where my team at the time did the first top 100, and then the rest of the stakeholders uh, and SWAT team team made it into the finals uh, and actually went through the whole program. So I do have a little bit of an unfair advantage of knowing a little bit more than probably other judges right now. So I'm going to just ask one quick question with the latest dynamics in the marketplace and FDA allowing for specifically for psychiatric disorders uh, for DTXs to go straight to market. Um, how does that obviously on one side it benefits you, but from the other side, there's question marks on other players just getting into the market much quicker. All right. So can you talk a little bit about that? Okay. Sure. Our, start our time now. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, yeah, it certainly does accelerate the um, availability. Um, our core focus, even pre-COVID, was on um, launching a D2C version, um, as you and I had talked about, Eugene. Um, and another thing that we've been seeing on our side is actually increased from um, uh, a, a commercial interest from in the employer groups. And so our focus right now from a go-to-market is seeing how can we translate those opportunities into revenue generating. The DTX will still continue, but as, as it stands right now for us, it's the, the employer and the consumer base that we think we could uniquely target. Does that answer Thank your you. question? Yep, yep. Thank you. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, if I can add, we started receiving inbound requests from employers just doing web searches on their own, and we actually put out a couple of price quotes, and we're waiting to hear back from a few of them on, final, on decisions on whether they want to move ahead or not. This is how, in, that's how much the demand has increased. And one, one employer said that they haven't seen anything like this, and they've been doing their own search, which so is a clinic validated program. Just, just a recommendation to all speakers, um, try to keep your answers concise and to the point. Um, are there other questions? Yes. Uh, can you tell us a bit about your patient population and especially with respect to people who otherwise might not have good access to mental health services and so on? Sure. Um, we actually do really well. Um, that's one of the um, really cool things about this is we are able to reach um, hard to motivate, difficult to reach populations such as Medicaid. We've had particular success with that po population and they specifically need mental health. Um, in fact, um, we won um, as an evidence of the patient uh, 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 um, 
validation, we won the iChoose event that was held in the Bronx, New York, where patients chose the solution of choice that they wanted shown in their community. And our age range is pretty wide, 18 to 65. Um, the average player is, like have like the histogram here. Um, the average player is a female who's in her 40s. So we've got a pretty, pretty broad range in appeal, which is really great. Um, obviously, the kid, there's a kid component, the children's certainly, but, but what's really surprising for a lot of people is that the adults really resonate with this. And even certain cohorts, like men over 50, once, the ones that actually use it are engaged for a much longer period of time than the average. Okay, do we have more questions? Hi, hey, Swati. <clears throat> Um, I really love the concept, but I had a question. Do you have any major roadblocks um, with the product? Um, not uh, from what perspective? Scaling, building? But maybe from the patient's perspective, just getting them to um, play the game or maybe even just adoption. Yeah, what's your No, actually... Well, every time we talk to a pa patient, they love it, and they're really super excited about it, like anybody. I've actually, when we were in the Bronx, we had African-American men and women wanting to take my plushies from the, the, um, the table, which never happened. They, now they get stolen. So the appeal and the idea that they could get a little levity and a um, is – is really an appeal. There, there really isn't a roadblock for us. It's the clinicians, frankly, that we have to convince <laughs> and the health system. Right. Okay. Maybe one last quick question. Anybody? Martinez? Alex, I got a question. Uh, this is uh, John Martinez. Do you have any data that shows that patients who are using your app have uh, either a decrease in, in their medication usage or don't go on to needing higher doses for anxiety or depression? Do you have any data supporting Clinical that? efficacy data. That, great question. Yeah, so that's what we're working with with Bayer, um, so they can help us. We've been talking about potentially being used in the specialty pharmacy area, specifically around impacting med adherence and compliance. We have heard anecdotally from patients, the, the ones that have been using it, that some of their meds have been reduced um, by a, a step level. I, I have heard of a couple of patients who do that. Um, a couple of patients have told me that they've used it in the middle of the night, so it's prevented ER visits where they might have gone to the ER. Um, so that, that's some of the work that we'd like to do with strategic partners, if we can find those folks. Okay, and that'd be one recommendation I'd give you from a, from a clinician standpoint, is if you're trying to sell me on an app or a device or a treatment, being able to have some of that data say, hey, you know, this is going to be the benefit to you as a clinician is that you'll be prescribing less medications, your, your patients will have less ER visits. So it's good to hear that you're kind of already starting that, but I would encourage you to continue down that path as well, too. Yeah, the, the clinical results are around reductions in GAD and PHQ-9 and GAD-7. Um, it must be way over time. Heather? Yes, four okay. minutes. You, you need to like go, so if we're not, if we just keep going, please interrupt, Heather. Okay, I thought you said one last question, so I was a little... Yeah, but I mean, if they talk for two minutes after I say one last question, it's still too long. Uh, you got it. So, and now, Swati, you actually get the advantage of going first and the disadvantage, because oftentimes this happens in the beginning that we kind of let things go, but we're gonna be much tighter after this, but you also had to go first. So congratulations, you did a great job. Now, everybody who still has questions, including Pat and me and whoever, please put them into the general chat box, okay? If it's a specific question, you can actually, in the chat window, you can ask her directly. Um, but Swati, if you would do me a favor, do us all a favor and answer the questions that come through the chat box as well, because I have lots more questions. Now, judges, if you'll take a moment and fill out uh, section number one, which is all about uh, Light Sprite and Swati. I also, Swati, if we wanted to download and use the app, uh, it looks like I have it here. Am I gonna need a special code to be able to use this? No, but what we do ask is if you're gonna do that, put unless you wanna use it as a real user, please use test or demo, because we that's how we collect our clinical evidence is real world. So, um, so ask for an, okay, ask for an email ID and a password to log in. Do I need? I, I just successfully did it. I, I chose Light Sprite and Light Sprite as my ID and password. Yeah, use use Light Sprite as the clinic and clinician, and then put test or demo in your name if you don't want to use it as a regular user. So it'll pull out from the data that we analyze. I didn't see who uh, who said that. Was that you, Heather? 
No. Was this that was me. No, that okay. was me. I, I said that I, I logged in. I was able to log in and I used Light Sprite. And then as the provider, the only option I had was Light Sprite, actually. But it does give you the option if you want it to go, um, if you want the information. To get the but it's great having all these really smart people around. They figure stuff out. Um, very cool. Good job, Katie. You get a gold star. Okay, so uh, judges, take a second uh, and uh, and fill out that thing, uh, and uh, and let's queue up the second uh, performance, because this is performance of sorts, right? Um, great job, Swati. Uh, true professional. Um, while uh, now, number two is is um, oh uh, Ricardo, yeah. uh, yes, Marchisi. So thank you for coming from all. You're in Italy, right? Milan, maybe. Yeah. Yes, I am. So the land of fabric. So I actually I used to be in women's clothing. Um, I'm not literally. I mean, in the industry, and and we would send our shoppers uh, to Milan every year. So I was no, surprised. Absolutely, absolutely. The fabric solution coming from Milan. Absolutely. Um, it's actually one of our best portfolio companies. I just put my old. Um, I was a vice president of operations. My friend was a vice president of uh, production, and we managed. And she made 2,000 styles a year of production, and she was amazing. So she just joined one of our startups called Karen Wear, which is a medical clothing company. It's also our second company we invested in, and that's the company that just did the 100x in revenue. So they are loving it. But but anyway, so yeah, so just that just happens to be kind of the, one of the things we do is we place people in startups just at the right time. I mean, I, honestly, I, we kind of got lucky on that one, but um, but it was amazing. If you're in the right place at the right time. Okay, so are you? Are we driving or are you driving? You're driving. Okay, so Pat, do you have his uh, deck? Yep. Okay, so you should be able to see his deck. You're gonna go full screen. Yeah. Okay, good. Is this the, the opening slide? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so. I, I went right straight to the point. <laughs> I love it. You know, it's, I'm ready. It's, it's, okay, so but all the judges, anybody who's not ready, wave your hands and say stop out. Okay. Three, two, one. Okay, good, good. Um, okay, so four minutes when you start talking, that's when she starts counting. All right. Okay, uh, thank you for having me here. This is a good opportunity for us. Uh, I feel a little bit like an outsider for two main reasons. One, because our idea is not directly related to medical treatments of medical products. And secondly, because our company is not a startup, but it has a long history. We, uh, the company was founded by my father in 1951. And, uh, and uh, during the years has changed uh, a couple of times products and now we make uh, metal fabrics. So the problem um, we want to, to, solve, uh, to, to solve our idea is to uh, limit, the, limit the infection of COVID-19 in public spaces, especially in restaurants and bars, and bring that to their full capacity. Um, there are studies uh, made by uh, academic uh, people, so researchers, that say that, that, say that uh, infection is very um, dangerous in, in restaurants and bars because people take off their masks and because uh, droplets and aerosol can fluctuate in the air carried around by air conditioning um, streams of air. So uh, it is very important that, uh, that they limit the number of people, right now, they, they limit the number of people they, they, they have in their, in their rooms. And this is bringing a very uh, deep loss in their uh, revenues. Uh, many, many, many restaurants uh, are closing down. Uh, here in Italy, I don't know if this is happening in America, but here in Italy, where they can, they put tables outside because now it's, uh, uh, we're going towards summertime and uh, the weather is nice, but uh, they so don't know what to do. do you want us to advance slides ever or <laughs> we're just going to do this one slide? No, no, it's okay. I'm, okay. I'm telling you. We, we get the okay. idea. It's good okay. narrative. <laughs> um, so uh, in in um, in November or December they'll 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 have to face a very difficult situation. Go ahead. Our idea is to go ahead. Okay. Uh, our idea is to make uh, copper fabrics uh, used as curtains to intercept and neutralize infected um, droplets of uh, floating in the air. And this is going to be. There's a study that says that copper. Uh, 
neutralizes SARS-CoV-2 in a very short time. And uh, copper is one of the materials we normally use in our production. Uh, okay, you can go ahead. Uh, the market is very huge. There are uh, approximately one million, more than one million uh, restaurant locations only in the United States, about close to 200,000 uh, in Italy. Um, the materials, the low cost, uh, uh, it, I mean, uh, the, the, to make this fabric, uh, uh, you need, we need materials that are uh, low cost. So uh, this could be a very affordable application for uh, restaurants. Uh, we, we're looking for about half a million dollars investment and competencies. We need, we're, I'm personally uh, an engineer, an electronic engineer. So we need competencies from uh, epidemiologists and, and physicists for the streams of air and to understand how droplets move in the air. Okay, next slide. 30 seconds. Okay, uh, about us, as I said, we're a company that was funded in 1951. We have 20 years experience in textiles, uh, 20 years experience in metal fabrics, and we built, we develop and build our machinery by ourselves. We're a customer oriented company with a special uh, feeling the special feel regarding uh, design and an Italian style uh, for fabrics. Okay. Thank you. That's great, four minutes. Okay, great job, Ricardo. I think we all get it pretty clearly. Um, okay, so now you have four minutes for Q&A. Uh, anybody want to start us off? I'll start. Okay. So I know, uh, Alex, you said it's pretty clear. Uh, go ahead. Sorry, have you uh, made any sales yet to restaurants in Italy or in America? Good question, traction. Say it again, sorry. So what's, what have your sales like? Have you already made and sold some of these? No, uh, we are in, still in R&D stage where we have two fabrics currently under tests for antibacterial properties. Any, and any pre-orders? No, but we have a lot of companies interested uh, we're trying to make gloves with this fabric as well, because one of the problems is that uh, during with warm weather, uh, wearing rubber gloves is very uncomfortable and it can be dangerous as WHO uh, lately recommended. So we're trying to do, um, we're trying to produce a fabric that is good even to make gloves okay. and that, that will be breathable as well. Okay. Thanks. Eugene, you had a question? Yeah, um, I mean, uh, I know you said it's pretty clear. I'm actually a little bit kind of, you know, what what exactly is the product? That's one thing. And sounds like you also mentioned you have gaps on your team. But what would you spend the 500k on? We'll spend about 40% to finish R&D and certifications. Certifications are pretty expensive, uh, and uh, they require a lot of time. Uh, another 40% uh, as Selling efforts and uh, the balance, which is about 100, 100K in uh, IP protection. The product is actually a, a kind of curtain. I don't know if I can share my screen. Uh, it's not in the deck here. My screen. Yeah, you can share your screen. But is it yeah. this? Is this what you see on okay, the. Okay, it's the same restaurant basically. Uh, but yeah, so essentially it would hang. Let me see. Yeah, let me share his own. You can try to share your own. Oh, there you go. Um, can you see it? Yes, we can see it. Okay. Can you see this half circles is uh, basically it's a restaurant in Rome and uh, it's very trendy now amongst architects and architectural studios to hang curtains from the ceilings. So not just in front of uh, windows, but just in the middle of the ceiling, they do. So Ricardo, like, this isn't like a barrier between tables. You're saying that- I No, 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 that, that's attached, system that that's has a attached to there. tables. But our US distributor is also asking for materials to make, uh, to put them around the table. So you have like a private room, which is, uh, which separate uh, your table from, uh, from other tables. But as, uh, as the air flows through this, you think it will kill COVID, is your theory? It, 
we'll need to we'll need to make the fabric so that it uh, it um, it absorbs these uh, small particles. We're talking about five microns particles, five to ten micro particles, depending on if you talk, or if you cough, or if you sneeze. Uh, the, the particles are of different uh, size depending on how you emit them. And uh, so we'll need to absorb them on the fabric and neutralize them with copper. That's okay. the main I, idea. I have a question. How much does it cost to build one of those half circular um, copper material, I guess? Uh, 30 listen, seconds left. From... Uh, from uh, uh, roughly, because we do not know exactly uh, still the percentage of copper we'll put in inside. Uh, our cost per square meter is around eight euros. That's going to be probably nine dollars or something like that. And we think to be able to sell it between 25 to 33 uh, dollars per square meter. Okay, that's okay. great. That's it. That's four minutes. Okay. Okay, so if you have questions, please put them in the chat box. Um, you know, I put two in there, Ricardo. Um, so yeah, if you could, uh, if you could answer those, uh, that'd be great. Yeah. We'll yeah. review those um, later. We save all of that content as well. Um, and uh, and I, but I, I would like to emphasize if you want to queue up the third third presenter. Third, uh, so I need to do my judging, but that's a warm hug. Oh, okay. So Hennessy is, is up next. Hennessy, are you driving or is Pat driving? Look this up. Hey, yeah, sorry, I was muted. <laughs> Pat's driving. All right, I'll queue it up. Okay, so I'll queue you up. Um, now, judges, if you'll take a moment and um, go through and rate. Uh, uh, and I don't know. So Martinez, you you are you're a longtime sports medicine dude. What do you, what's your thoughts on the use of copper in this scenario? Okay, I guess we're, we're having mute issues. Copper has been known for a long time to be antimicrobial. Yeah, it's, it's a, okay. Well, I'll, I'll I'll read your answer later. <laughs> See the chat box. Okay, so I am done with my review. And I'm hitting next. Okay, so I'm up to purple arm hug and we've got it on the screen. Uh, so I'm done with my review. Great job, Ricardo. Uh, very interesting idea. I, I actually have one side question for you. The thousand dollars that guy put in, is that a customer or a potential customer? That's why I was asking about pre-orders. Was that a pre-order or is that just a supporter? No, just to support you. I see. Okay. Check the chat box. I have two other questions I'd like you to answer. Thank you. Um, okay, great. And thank you for coming all the way from Italy. It's it's wonderful doing virtual events in that it's much easier to, to uh, the travel costs are a lot lower. So I don't have to go to you. We don't have to come here. Although we had planned on going to Europe this summer, but apparently it's not happening. So, um, okay. So, uh, now, Atisha, you're not allowed to, to, to rate uh, somebody recommended. You know that. Okay. So, uh, so this, but well, we, we do love recommendations from mentors because, you know, we trust the mentor, the mentor trusts them, and it's a great way for us to, to get to know somebody in a trusted way. One of the wonderful things about running MedStarter and Health 2.0 in New York for so long, you know, what Eugene handed to me is that now it's enormous. It's like 85,000 people around the world that we're connected to that when we want to you know, know if we know somebody who knows the people, it's very easy to be one degree of freedom away from pretty much anybody doing anything new and interesting in healthcare, which is fantastic. So this is a great example of that. So um, I will shut up and let Hennessy do her thing because otherwise we're gonna be here all night, um, which is why we only do four minutes. So I'm sorry it has to be so short. We would love to listen to you guys for hours, but you know, there's only so much time we can do this for. Okay, finally, I'll shut up. Uh, four minutes whenever you start talking and go. Okay, great, thank you. All right, so hello everyone. My name is Hennessy Stisla. I am the founder and CEO of Purple Inc. and we are delivering medical supply kits. Next. So uh, three weeks ago, I received a phone call about a patient named Monica, 89, bed bound with COVID-19 symptoms. 
She's at home. She's eligible to participate in COVID-19 research, and she needs care and treatment. Unfortunately, um, she's not allowed to leave the house, obviously, and there's an increased wait time from 46 to 61 minutes at the clinic just for one blood draw. So I received this phone call and I reached out to a partner that has mobile phlebotomists because we supply kits to mo mobile phlebotomists and they're always eager to work and ready to start. But because of the current shortage in New York um, from five to seven per site, unfortunately, Lizzie couldn't see her, couldn't see Monica. Okay, next. <laughs> so our solution is arm hug. Blood collection to be done much faster, 50% faster with a phlebotomist. How? Right? It's a portable phlebotomy station. It's a drawer that's packaged with a phlebotomy start kit. It has everything that a phlebotomist needs for mobile blood collection. So this can be used at home and you can bring it to the hospital, to the lab. It's mobile. ArmHug does have a utility patent that was filed by Mount Sinai School of Medicine and published in 2018. Next. So this is what it looks like when you would bring it to a home, right? And here are all of the supplies that you would need around it. Those are all the supplies that would fit in there. So mobile phlebotomists would go to the patient's homes to avoid long wait times and being exposed. And they could do it much faster, which, which means that the treatment is going to be quicker. For our, our patient's diagnosis will be made 50% faster. The revenues to the lab and the clinic go up by 25%, which is reducing the canceled appointments by 80%. Next. We want to develop a better place for mobile phlebotomists to find patients and vice versa. So we want to create a mobile phlebotomist database. So mobile phlebotomists will develop a website for free to be assigned to a job. And that could be diagnostic treatment, blood draw, or an antibody blood test for COVID-19 response. So here we have Lizzie. She's going to meet Monica. She's got the training and availability. She can use one arm hug with five starter kits delivered and scheduled for pickup. So what that means is that Purple will provide the kit for her, for her to use. And then Lizzie will receive a notification from Purple about her appointment, date, time, location, so she's readily accessible. Next, competition. So hospitals and diagnostic labs usually purchase blood collection supplies from various suppliers, like you see here. Purple wants to be more affordable, and we want to provide a service with all the bl blood collection supplies. So it's a one-stop shop. 70% of kits on the market do not contain all the supplies to begin blood collection. And our focus is on our clients receiving fast blood collection to get the job done faster. Next, strategic plan. F we, have, we are working with FDA consultants. We're in discussions with a contract manufacturer, and we are talking to supply chain distributors. Our goal is by 2024 to generate $900,000 in revenue. Next. 30 seconds left. So we are seeking $500,000 for our next round. And this is the breakdown. It will be 64% mostly manufacturing. Sales will have 26% and 10% on marketing. Next. This is our advisory board. If you guys have any questions or comments, I would love to hear more about it. Thank you. It's great, four minutes. Oh, Alex, I think is talking, but he's muted. Yeah. We did. You're good. Am I muted? Okay. I'm sorry. That's not part of your time. I was, I was just saying that in the chat box, um, also great job. In the chat box, uh, am I muted again? No, you're good. I think now. No, we can hear you. We can hear you. Keep going. Thank you, Eugene. In the chat box, I put a link to a blog post that has all these companies, uh, their projects on medstarter.com, um, which has a ton more information about the clinical efficacy data, about you know their plan. Some of them uh, actually have a full uh, data room with all the due diligence documents that you can request access to. In the case of an arm hug, you can actually order an arm hug, uh, pre-order it uh, through the system. Um, I think, if I recall, um, and, uh, and, and the projects are all still live. So um, 
that uh, is going to help us figure out what happens after this with the teams. So uh, I put links to this specific project and all the projects in the blog post um, that I've chopped into the chat box. Um, great job, Enesis. Um, and are there questions? Four minutes. Can I, can I question? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, how yeah, heavy is one of the arm hugs? How heavy is an arm hug? Yeah, great question. Three pounds. So we're aiming to keep it as light as possible because it's for transportation. I see. What are, what are sales like? I mean, what's the, you have you sold, pre-sold? We have um, pre-orders from a mobile phlebotomy company um, partner that we're going to have. Uh, they usually see 200 phlebotomists per week. So we're trying to see if we can get, we can become their supplier in the future. And that's still in discussion. Do you have all the molds made and everything? I mean, it's, I mean, you could digitally print this probably, but I mean, what, what's your manufacturing plan? Is what we're looking at to be more cost effective. I'm sorry, I missed part of that. What's your plan? So we're gonna do 3D printing. Okay. Uh, we're working with a medical manufacturer. So they have all like of their FDA forms and mm -hmm. they have all our CAD files and they're ready for mass manufacturing. We're just raising and we're also looking into um, working with other partners to see if we can like try to market the product a little bit. Can, if you don't mind telling me, what do your margins look like in the early sales? Sure, so uh, 60, above 60% margins. That's good, even with digital printer, that's great. Um, but then again, what are you charging for these? The portable, uh, when you look at the image, it's the actual kit, it's $100, and then you are able to resupply it. So for a resupply for five of them would be $20. Yes. And then that's usually the price point that a lot of phlebotomists have for supply kits, which is like a $20 supply kit. So we want to make it also affordable so that they can purchase it right away. So I don't know about you, but to me, if anybody else wants to ask questions, feel free to jump in. I just, I get a million. Um, so to me, uh, quality is much more important than quantity or speed um, when it comes to phlebotomy. I don't want somebody digging around in my arm. Um, does this, Obviously, it makes it go faster, but does it also make it more likely to be a better stick? It's possible. Um, that's definitely something we want to look into just because we angled it a certain way so that when you put your arm on it, it's actually angled at a place where you can see the, the vein a little bit better. So it's more at eye level besides like the yeah. having so, to tuck a pillow underneath. Like I've seen some really... Um, yeah, I hate it when they're like digging. I mean... I used to be a lot fatter and they used to always dig and it was terrible. Um, the, uh, how does it make it faster though? Right, so the idea is that just because they have all of the supplies they need to start, it makes it much faster. So for instance, if, yeah. right. So a normal phlebotomist would go to three different supply yeah. sites to get a needle from one supplier, uh, a gauze from another one, just because they, all suppliers don't sell all of their materials on one site, or it's too expensive to purchase them all on one site. Yeah, so we yeah. want to prepackage it so that they can just, we'll, we'll let them know, like, we're going to get rid of the headaches for you. So why does, it take, why does it take you three years to get to a million dollars in sales, not even a million? Why does it take three years? Yeah. Well, that's why we're starting now. We, uh, we feel that we can get there faster. Was the patent awarded or it was just yeah. published? Okay. And going back to your competitor slide, <laughs> um, I didn't really get this. Um, I guess now I understand a little bit better. You're saying they can order all the supplies through all these other services, but as piecemeal, but there's nobody actually doing like a package kit like you're doing? Correct. So we want to try to create a space where people say, I need a kit. I know who to go for, for that. Okay. So Martina, you, you manage urgent care facilities I mean, is this the kind of thing that you guys would buy a thousand of? Um, not in our seconds. specific urgent care because we have we have labs right on site. But for you know docs that do house calls, and I think for mobile phlebotomy, like the like they've already uh, demonstrated, would be really helpful. He's like, I sent it to you. And All right. Does anybody other than me have questions? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm just struggling then what pre what prevents um, others packaging this stuff together and I and what's the patent actually on it? It's not last question. Sure. The patent is on the actual object on arm hug. Um, and you're saying what prevents okay. them. So 
we would have to discuss with suppliers like let's say some of the supplies they just don't have some suppliers like it's very competitive you have to be able to speak to the suppliers and see which ones can actually give you all of the supplies together and kit it for you um, the reason why they haven't done this um, already is because it's a logistics issue they just don't want to have to try to figure it out for just kits and so we want to be that space we want to be the kits um, they're doing they're doing right now just distribution all they care is about distribution um, so this is, uh, this is working more on uh, customer focus. Yes. That's great. That's four minutes. Thank you. Fantastic Thank you. job. Uh, we haven't done this yet okay. at all, but let's give a round of applause. Uh, not just because for, for all the presenters so far, very, very excited to have you guys here. Uh, some great things. So great job, Genesis. Um, and uh, okay, so judges, if you'll take a moment and fill out uh, what you think of the arm hug. Um, just uh, as I'm going through this, I'm just going to talk a little bit out, out loud, as opposed to talking in my head. Um, but but I would definitely make sure that you get some clinical efficacy data. See if you can say, you know, on average it takes 30 seconds to do the stick, and now it takes 20 seconds or whatever. You know, just get real data. Um, I don't really think it's innovative. Okay. So our next presenter um, is yeah. Hiko. Oh yes, yeah. the Bryants, Dale and Dacha. Or who's here today? Is Dale? Dale? We got Dale. Yeah. Hey Dale, how you been? Good. Dale's a member of our Health Two O New York community. He's been coming to our events for years. Um, you know, this is not his first rodeo, um, but he had a different, interesting idea here, and uh, and they uh, they did well in the scoring. Uh, I don't know if you know, but on the MedStarter site, there's, you know, lots of people come to it and they get involved or they don't get involved. We run all these different metrics on, on what happens on the site. Um, Atisha was a little disturbed the other day when I knew a little too much about what she had done or not done on the site, <laughs> for example. Um, but yeah, we like to know everything that people think and you can tell what people think by what they're doing. Um, anyway, so, so, uh, so you guys scored well on the site, even though you weren't there uh, for the full time, uh, but we factor that in as well. Oh, Moni's here, Moni Weichler. Hey, Moni, uh, do you want to take a second and introduce yourself? Yes, hi, everyone. Uh, it's Moni Weichler. Um, I'm a principal at Advanced Informatics, but I have uh, over 30 years experience in payer as well as provider areas, worked 14 years at Montefiore and Mount Sinai for another eight years and all the way from going back to NYP. So a long, um, and very uh, happy career in healthcare. Yes, and he is a leader in the New York healthcare innovation ecosystem. Uh, we're very proud and happy to have you here, Moni. And I just found Thanks, out you're a neighbor. When, when I went to go ship you your package, I saw I could just drive it over there and save myself five bucks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I will gladly spend that five dollars, or maybe even more, on lunch uh, tomorrow or Friday or something like that. Um, We're on. Okay, we are on. Very cool. Um, also, I see uh, Dr. Parajuli, who I sort of introduced a little bit before. But Sunita, why don't you uh, introduce yourself? Uh, is she on mute? Did you mute her? I don't even see her. She was here before. Oh, there she is. I'm sorry. There you are. Are you going to unmute her or am I gonna... I guess I will. It's bad if we both do mm -hmm. Hey, Sunita. So Sunita is an infectious disease doc, works for Arch Care uh, in the Upper East Side. Uh, Sunita, can you be heard now? No. No. I see her lips moving, but I don't hear anything. Okay. She's a med starter mentor, you know, uh, has judged half of these contests. Also, uh, I think she led the Bollywood dance thing a couple weeks ago, or I don't know. Yeah, she was supposed to, but she didn't show up that day. But anyway, so we're doing a TikTok dance so you can prove yourself uh, later. Um, so, okay, so the couple new judges came in. Uh, it's good to see you. Um, if everybody hasn't, can you post the, um, the judging sheet again? Yeah. If you're a judge and you just got here and just skip the first three uh, companies, uh, or if you did, um, Pat's gonna put in the chat box um, a link to the judging form. Um, you know, the way that we do this, we normalize it by judge anyway, so it winds up being, because uh, we have enough judges, we have statistical significance. Let's not get into the data. I just, trust me, I, I was a scientist once, so I do the math um, 
in very complicated ways. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so anything you can provide is great. All, all data is good data, um, especially from our judges and the audience who gets involved and interested. So, okay, so uh, I think I've taken up enough time here. So we're ready for our fourth HECO Health uh, being presented by Dale Bryant. Um, I assume everybody's ready. Heather, you ready? Okay. Uh, Dale, you ready? Start when you start. Okay. Um, my name is Dale. I'm going to be talking about HICO Health today. HICO Health is a telehealth company that delivers culturally relatable health literacy education and behavioral change programming to communities of color living with type 2 diabetes all through our mobile app. Founded by my wife, who's a pharmacist for almost 25 years and a diabetes specialist, and myself, an entrepreneur for almost 25 years. Um, there's no shortage of solutions in a type 2 diabetes space, so how are we different? Well, we believe that there's no one size or solution that fits all. And African Americans have a different set of health challenges um, in addition to the normal health challenges out there. We are more likely to have diabetes than whites. When we do have diabetes, it leads to greater vision loss, kidney failure, and amputations. And this COVID pandemic has exposed how uh, hypertension, diabetes, and other comorbidities have increased risk factors for hospital admissions and COVID deaths. Um, Data also shows that uh, Black populations are not making healthier food choices, not being uh, physically uh, active, not understanding the role of medication in their health journey, and not learning how to develop healthier behaviors. Um, and when we look at some of the underlying reasons, lack of uh, access to health care, low levels of health literacy, lack of support between doctor visits, and sometimes bias in healthcare. Um, so our solution is our HICO Health app, which was designed to engage patients in a personalized way to adopt new healthier behaviors than to normalize and sustain those behaviors. And we do it by equipping a patient with our smartphone app that's easy to use and provides actionable data, teaches a patient with evidence-based culture, culturally relatable curriculum um, administered by a health professional who's culturally competent with the end goal being to normalize these behaviors. For this specific uh, MedStar challenge, we have a campaign called Adopt a Church, Empower Ourselves, where we work with churches and a church point person who could be a health coach, a community health worker, where they bring their own expertise to the table. Uh, they serve as a healthcare co-pilot to the patient, using our technology to monitor, to engage, and to uh, intervene by different risk levels. And on the patient side, through our HICO Health app, they're logging uh, blood glucose and blood pressure readings, learning how to control their data. They're enrolling in a variety of um, virtual health classes learning how to share health data with their care team, watching um, videos on a variety of health topics on demand on their own schedule, and practicing making healthier choices. And the app reinforces literacy and knowledge with automated text touches throughout as well. Um, we have some before and after um, customer surveys, patient surveys, where there's increased medication adherence, more glucose readings, more productive doctor visits, and uh, increased health accountability. We're launching with 25 churches over five years to reach 13,000 potential uh, end users with this specific MedStarter campaign. And that's it. That's great, thank you, four minutes. Okay, so um, great presentation, Dale. Uh, I would like to see what the app looks like. So if you want to share your screen and show us what it looks like while you're answering questions, that's fine by me. Sure. Um, are there questions uh, for Dale? Uh, um, yes, um, 
Do you have data on whether, you know, reductions in blood sugar and so on, or has it been around long enough? Um, well, we, we have data, it's self-reported. Um, we don't have 100% data reporting from all the patients, but the preliminary data um, vaguely is um, A1Cs that are above 12, we show a 1.5% reduction. A1Cs below 10, 0.25% mm -hmm. reduction. What's, okay. what's your utilization? Like, how many people have used it? What's their attrition rate? That we have put 100 users through our program in 10 classes, 10 users at a time uh, since uh, last August. We've been rolling classes. Interesting. Who's, who's paying for this? Um, so I would say 5% of our patients are direct to consumer. They find us on a website. The other 95% come through one of uh, a couple of intermediaries. We've been working with churches even before this particular uh, MedStarter campaign. Um, we also work with solo practitioners who are medical professionals in the business for themselves. They could be RDs, optometrists, nutritionists, wellness professionals who want a um, culturally relatable digital health offering for their practice. And we're in talks now with um, a couple of flexible benefit plans to offer uh, our program to their employees. Yeah. Have you tried selling, so, so to unions or insurance companies, a PEPM basis kind of thing? Well, uh, that, that's a plan, but it's hard to get those meetings. So um, we can help. Okay. So in the meantime, we, we uh, you know. We know the answer, Dale. I got it. Uh, are there any other questions? <laughs> I don't have a question, but I have a quick comment. Or actually, it has a question. Can people record their, um, or the users record their sugar levels um, daily? I have, I know that people with diabetes do check their sugar levels every day. Well, what, so what's the question? Can they record that daily through the app? It would be kind of cool to get that data. Yes. Um, hold on, let me just uh, if I can get this. The answer is yes. They can record blood pressure and blood glucose daily um, and share with their health team as well. Well, this is Jeffrey uh, Cooper. I think this is a really good um, uh, concept. And um, I just want to encourage you to move uh, forward looking at a geographical model, giving an evidence-based uh, study under your belt so you have the evidence to show the efficacy of, the, uh, of your solution. And um, I, I think that it can uh, work. We saw a similar example with the prescription drug program. If you were to open up any church and ask how many people were taking medications, they would all, 90% of them would show that they're taking uh, diabetes medication. So clearly, you know that there's a market need for it. It's now just having the data to, to show that. Mm -hmm. And having a church as a central point, uh, mm -hmm. feedback, I think, ties the church in with being a, a stakeholder in that local managed care organization or in that hospital service here because you're partnering with them to reduce morbidity, to reduce a level of diabetes in, in that uh, uh, geographical. Jeff, 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 stop. 30 seconds. No, no. <laughs> Jeff just spent like a minute of, of Dale's time. So give him another minute back if there's a question. Okay. Um, thank you, Jeff. You can fill out in the in the form, you know, all sorts of stuff. Anyway, you can talk to Dale afterward. I'm excited that you're excited about this and you've got thoughts for, for, for Dale. Uh, I did I did just post in the chat um, saying that I missed the ask and how much you're asking for and what you're look what you're using it for. So for, for this uh Med Starter campaign, uh, each church pays fifty dollars per month and their congregation members get the uh, access to the program for free. And so we're looking to, to launch five-year campaigns for each church. So 25 churches, 
five years, $75,000. Okay. What's that? So he's not, it's not, he's not asking for investment, he's just trying to get customers. Yeah, no, so, uh, so just to sort campaign versus investment. I think what Aditya was saying, do you want to turn this into a business? And if so, what are you looking for in that with respect to that investment? Well, um, before this campaign, we were already outreaching uh, to churches and onboarding churches. We have some churches that are clients. When the pandemic hit and churches couldn't convene, it became tough to accept tithing and pay for church expenses. And thus, um, we launched this Adopt the Church campaign. So outside of this um, campaign, we're, you know, accessing and, 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 and going forward down different revenue paths with churches, small corporate plans, and solo practitioners. Got it. Okay. Are there other questions? Yeah, that's four minutes. Yeah. Okay. So once again, if you have questions, please put them into the chat box. Um, I also dropped a link to, uh, to Dale and Dutch's campaign uh, for Adopt a Church. Um, and judges, if you'll take a moment to fill out the, uh, the judging form. Uh, so that's our fourth company? Or? Yes. Okay. So, um, so we're going to bring up our fifth company, uh, Jeff Bonner from Totally Pregnant. Um, now, the last time he was on our stage, he did pretty well, but there's a lot of competition and it was, it was over a year ago. Um, it was a year and a half ago, actually. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing progress. Just so you know, I mean, the teams that do well in our contests, including his, uh, we do uh, due diligence on, we look at them more closely, request a ton of documents. And then if we don't feel like we're ready to take a risk in investing in a company, we still stay in touch and we still will give some advice. Sometimes we'll let them go through our acceleration programs and things like that. Um, on scholarship, you know, and we just, we, build, we keep the relationship going. About half of the teams we've invested in, it's exactly like that. They, they came in fourth place and then they came in first and then we invested. Um, and, and then like we were talking about for PEPM contracts or, you know, selling directly to distributors or what have you, we help broker those relationships as well. And even uh, nowadays we're working on helping sell the companies to the, to the big players too. So, um, so yeah, so, so we love to see companies doing well, growing. I think last time I heard from Jeff, he had 13 hospitals, mostly in Israel, that were using his product. Uh, last time I talked to him, he, he had a, a lot more going on. So I'm looking forward to hearing all about Totally Pregnant. Um, so I think I've jabbered long enough that all the judges probably did their judging. Um, so if Heather's ready and Jeff is ready. Jeff is off mute. And he's ready to go. Whenever you're ready, Jeff. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Jeff Bonner. I'm the CEO of Totally Pregnant. I'm not personally pregnant, but my daughter is. Um, maternity departments are a special place in every hospital. Um, the Center of Joy, what a uh, labor and delivery head nurse told me. So we're really focused on a platform that brings joy. Um, so let's get into it. Okay, so we start with a white label customizable platform for joyful hospital maternity departments. We've added a uh, resilient.mom, a COVID-19 edition of the content. So we have COVID support. Um, we have 13 paid hospitals, wait, we now have 14 paid hospitals. Our first post-COVID customer. Uh, we're finalizing contract details now. Um, so that'll be a new, so we now have 14. We have over 600,000 downloads and moms on average are using the app four times per week, first time pregnancies. Um, each hospital gets their own version of the app, custom branded and with custom content. So they get to tell their story. They they're each have their own app. Um, well, what are moms looking for? They're on social media. They, uh, they're on their phones constantly. First of all, we're providing a trusted source of information. And by the way, these, all these screenshots are from customer versions of the app. 
Um, they love our videos. The videos get watched a lot. What drives that four times per week number is all the videos available to watch. Um, the uh, pandemic support is becoming important. Um, the, in particular, the first thing to do to help protect your baby is to protect yourself. Um, the hospitals promote their women-friendly and baby-friendly features. So breastfeeding support line 24-7, lowest C-section rates in the area. Um, again, these are all customer screenshots from their version of the app. Uh, a, a local hospital um, provides social determinants of health support right in the app. So the local WIC offices, um, support for nutrition assistance, family planning, infant care, and so on. Well, what do hospitals get out of it? Bless you. Well, they get 100 to 200 new moms, new potential patients each month with the hyper-targeted outreach. So we're running ads on behalf of the hospital in Instagram and, and Facebook uh, so the hospitals find, so the patients, they're getting new patients coming to them. Um, what's the bottom line? I don't have a lot of time to go through all the numbers, but NYU Langone figured out that it's a, worth just under $350,000 per year. That's after they pay for our app. Um, I'm the uh, CEO. I have enterprise software experience. I led IBM's first WebSphere team. Uh, Tiffany McKeever is our expert in maternal health and healthcare service management. Erin Mitchell is a hospital marketing expert. All right, 30 seconds. We have a new team member too, very important. DXC is the third largest healthcare systems integrator. Um, we did a health tech talk replacing a him session they were running. Uh, we had 13,000 viewers of that tech talk. Um, they've selected Totally Pregnant to deliver on top of their population health AI platform. Oops, why did they select us? Unique focus on patient experience and population health, attention to COVID-19 support, address the worst you, the U.S. worst maternal health in the developed world, and save their customers more than eight billion per year. All right, that's great. Thank you. Four minutes. Thank you. Questions. It's, uh, good progress, Jeff. Um, can you tell me that the 14 hospitals are they all in the U.S. or are most they're of them? All, they're all in the U.S. Definitely. Are you allowed to tell us which ones? Uh, well, the ones that nearby, NYU Langone, Sunset Park, uh, Montefiore, um, St. Luke's, um, okay, well, Prairie Ridge. I mean, th those are the ones you'd be likely to know about because they're in the why, why? Why is it only 14? It's been over a year and a half. I mean, I, I feel like- Well, we've had no sales during COVID. Um, and uh, a year and a half ago, we didn't have 13. So we well, had 13 seven in Israel. or eight. Okay. Well, these are all US based now though. So that's different. All are US, yes. Okay. Yes. When, what's gonna help you scale to 100 hospitals or 1,000 hospitals? I mean, when, when did, I didn't see projections on that. Did, were they in there? No, I, I didn't put projections in here. Um, the, there's a huge issue with hospitals about just having the referrals Having NYU Langone, for example, has taken many, many months just to get their app rolled out. So um, doing more, more marketing, uh, specifically in venues where hospitals would find us, is the key. Right now, this is all cold calling and working LinkedIn. So our key yeah. goal of our fundraise is to do more aggressive marketing. So I have a question. What, so your, the hospitals are white labeling um, the app, but what exactly are they doing? Like, are they, how are they integrating to, is it integrated with an EMR or how, how does that work? You, you know, we support integration with the EMR and mostly the hospitals decline to do it because they don't want to deal with their IT department. Mm -hmm. um, we would love Jeff, Jeff, we lost you. Your audio is uh, messed up. Oh, how about now? It's fine now. Okay. Yeah, we would love to integrate with DMR. 
The platform supports that. Most hospitals decline because they don't want to deal with their IT department. Great. For the hospitals marketing for you and they're kind of telling the patients that there is an app that they can download? Well, the hospital pays for the app and gives it to their patients for free. Got it. Thank and you. By the way, crucial point, you do not need to be a patient to use the app. Part of the whole rationale of it is if you're in the hospital service area and you find out about it in your social media and we're thereby promoting the hospital. Yeah, uh, so uh, Jeff, does the, does, the, does the app hold any PHI? I mean, there's no integration and anyone can download it. Can you put in some, it doesn't or it's just information? In, it doesn't unless they work with us to do that. So that's, that's Moni Weisler who used to run this at yeah. Monty, incidentally. It does not yeah. hold HI okay. unless the hospital has chosen to do that. And most of them have, have said they don't want to do that. Yeah, I mean, it'd be pretty cool to, to, to have this integrated, you know, like with my chart and, and have bi-directional integration would really be more comprehensive and easier for the mothers and the patients to use. Mm -hmm. um, if, if, you, if you know of a hospital ready to embrace that, we're ready to do it. The, so, the, the original version of the app was built in Israel, and they have extensive integration with the, with the EMR, but we've had to turn it off for our U.S. customers. Yeah, the Israeli hospitals have open APIs. Those were homegrown EMRs, and they're not epic, which are pretty close. Yeah. That's great. That's four minutes. Thank you. I'm going to throw in one more question from Pat, which was in 10 seconds or less, tell us about your clinical efficacy, preferably in terms of uh, newborn survival rate or some standard rate that you can say it increased it by X percentage. Um, we drive 100 to 200 new users per month. Is that what I'm saying? That's, the, that's we filling not, that. We have not, hold on, we have not done a clinical efficacy study. Again, the hospitals have declined to do that. Got it. So okay. we are anxious to find a hospital Jeff, willing to work with us yeah. to generate those yeah. numbers. We got all that, Jeff. You're out of time. Okay, what? so judges, take your, take your, you can answer it more fully in the chat box. Okay. But for right now, we have to move this along. And judges, please take a moment to, to fill out your, your forms. Uh, on what you think of this. Um, I'm very curious to see what people think. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's good progress, Jeff. I'm very excited to see, your, see that happening. So now we have a 10 minute break. Uh, people can go to the bathroom or what have you. Um, we uh, we uh, had planned to do a TikTok dance break. Um, yeah. uh, is anybody interested in this? <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, so take it off of uh, sharing and then so if you want to be in this thing, and if you want to dance with us, you're welcome to. I know it's a little silly, but it's only for a few minutes. If you want to go do something else for 10 minutes. But we think it's good to get up and stretch. And uh, you know, we went to the effort of actually finding and then for writing down all of the, uh, all the moves of this particular dance. So uh, my um, capable assistant, uh, Pat uh, Hurd, will take you through this. If, oh, just like a show of hands, does everybody not want to do this? Because we could not do this if we don't want. It's kind of silly. But Jeff does well. Does, does anybody want to do it other than me? <laughs> okay, so show of hands. Yes, do it. Show of hands, do it. Don't do it. Okay, fine. We're not going to do it. Oh, Katie wants to. I can't hear you, Katie. Unmute. Unmute everybody. How come, is everybody like locked from unmuting? Hang on. No, wait. We have to, we have to. Well, you're not a, you're not a host, so you can't unmute. Oh, well, here we go. Now I can unmute. unmute. I, I, I said I want you to do it. I want to watch you do it. No, the whole idea is that we all do it. Like it's a Brady Bunch kind of thing, you know? And then you can like, you know, point over here and say, hey, look at Heather. I, I don't know if it's always the same order, but you know, Pat is to my left and Heather's to my right. Okay. So if, if. No, yes, maybe. Atisha, should we do this or not? No. <laughs> no? Absolutely not. Okay, so then fine, we won't. If Sunita's not doing it, we're not doing it. <laughs> fine. Come, talk amongst yourselves. Unmute everybody. We'll be back in five minutes. <laughs> Make or yourself Alex. 
Please do it. Please. That's, that's the, you can have voted, Katie. I think Alex and Pat need to do it. Yes, Alex and Pat, you, you gotta, you gotta just for 10 minutes and oh, then come back. I'm not gonna do it alone. Yeah, you're the leader. You got to break it in, and then everybody might be more comfortable later. And the next time, you know, I mean, it's the middle of the day. Nobody's drinking. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna have to start. Can I do it? <laughs> All right. What are we doing? Are we doing it? I don't think so. I don't think anyone else is doing it. Do it All right. Okay, I'll do so it. At least give them the training, and then they can decide what they want to do. Okay? Fine, I'll just walk you through it then, and I'll be the only one embarrassing myself. Well, no, I'll join you in a second, but I'm kind of busy over here. I'm getting corona. <laughs> That'll be funny in a minute. All right, there's nine moves, and this all oh, goes through three phases each. So the first one is check your watch. Second move is cut it off. Third move is- I can only see half of you. Really? Patrick, make your screen I, big. I can see your Alex's screen for some reason. I'll what? make myself. Oh, so yeah, we have Corona. <laughs> oh, there you go. I'm sorry, I had to scroll over. I don't know how to use them, sorry. <laughs> okay, so you now you can get your own beverage if you want. Okay, so you're not on the screen. You're like half. Oh, there you are. So you just. I'm half up. on your screen. Got you it. have it up as the poll. Everybody, but right. like, I'm just. They're just that speaker view to me. Oh, I see. So I can be in the screen the whole time. Yeah. yeah. Or not if I don't want to be. Well, incidentally, this is the shirt for you judges. Uh, maybe most of those canceled four days in the back. Okay, so this is the, the instructions. So go ahead, Pat. So first one is check the time. Second one is kill it. Third move is equal. Then lasso. Then the figure eight. Then whoa, no, no, whoa. No, no, the, the crazy. Oh yeah, crazy, crazy. crazy. Whoa, whoa. Clap. Front clap, yes. And then, then the number one. Then number one, and then baby. Baby. Okay, so we can put music for this. Yeah, I was just walking them through this okay. step. Okay, so why don't you just show it all together? Okay. We'll do without the music. I'll put the music on. He's going to put the music on. Is anybody else going to try this cane? <laughs> Come on. Help me out here. No? I see a lot of people turn off their cameras, too. I think we I would, except for I had a soup in the, in the microwave that I've been waiting to eat, and um, my mm -hmm. apartment's under construction. I'm wearing a dorky outfit. If I would have <laughs> had a heads up, I might have done it with you. Hmm. Well, had I known you were coming, although I did see you on the... On the uh, on the uh, sign up list. But, uh, I'll do it next time if you do it again. I really will. You're going to med school now? No, I, did. I know I finished. But I, I took I took a little bit of time off. I'm applying for residency. Oh, cool. What, what, uh, what specialty? General surgery, but I don't know if I'm competitive enough for it. So I'm also applying to a couple other things. But uh, I, I like the procedure. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. It's always pathology. <laughs> That's what I. I I'm, I'm an extrovert. But, Oh no. Yeah, I know. It's just like it's like a it's a good uh you know stable you know you don't have to deal with patients. For me, it would it would have made sense. Or radiology. Can you yeah, radiology can, works. can you meet yours? Sure. Okay. 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 Is that for this? Still doing it for me. Oh, okay, you're good. Nope. Okay, we really need it. I think. No worries. Is it from this? All right, one sec. Right, so we did actually try to practice this okay. before. Okay. Ready? All right, I need the, the cheat sheet. Okay, so. Oh so first, is, I did do the first part. Ready? Yes. <laughs> okay, he does it much better. <laughs> I'm just watching him. 
Does anybody else want to try? Anybody? It was just us. See, last time we did this, we had like nine people doing it. Yeah. If we have Eugene running. Eugene does a better job. Okay, fine. We'll give up. Do it a couple more times. Not if nobody else is going to join us. Let's just take it. Okay, I'll do it again. <laughs> and we have to run. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, uh, that's that's all we're doing here because nobody else is playing. But we did try. And now we we have all our privileges, so all right, so Normally at our events, this would be the mingling time where you all get to know each other. You could have some snacks. You know, we always serve various types of beverages. There's sometimes dancing, not always. Um, so, I guess we should get back to work. Well, I just did every like two more minutes. Okay. So yeah, I see a lot of people. Um, so when you're back, turn your camera back on so you know if anybody needs to. You know, or whatever. If anybody wants to, is new here, they haven't introduced themselves, um, that is a judge or a mentor. Um, introduce yourself, but I don't see anybody new. Oh, Dr. Saperstein. So, hey, how are you doing? I'm uh, Yair Saperstein. Uh, CEO of AVOMD, and uh, my background is in the field of medicine, public health, and entrepreneurship, and it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, I, but you're also like a star in my world, because you know, you're the, the video on the, the treadmill. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'm here, but you know, the whole right. thing. No. Just, <laughs> also, claim to fame is you know, the video treadmill thing, you know, okay. giving smile direct love their ideas all this stuff how come you wouldn't dance on screen with us i mean come on if you're willing to do that <laughs> you know you know there's di there's a difference between in person and on screen that it's just not able to be expressed in words yeah no it's cool the uh um i don't know i was just impressed last time we had uh i think it was like eight or nine judges uh dancing right dr yeah. Nazareth. This Sunita? Sunita wasn't dancing that day. Uh, Eugene, Aline his daughter. Aline, Aline, you've been very quiet today. Are you, are you there? Or are you, you're living it up in Paris? Okay, it is pretty late in Europe, so so it's possible that, uh, that she's uh, also not here. Um, yeah, so no, we had Eugene, us, and uh, a bunch of other people dancing. It's, it's out there on, uh, on our YouTube channel somewhere. Somewhere yeah. on MedStar so, or Med TV. So I don't know if you guys know this, that we record, record all of these and with some pretty light editing, we, um, we, we post it on, uh, on, our, on our website and on MedStar.tv, uh, which is just a link to an area of our website. Okay, so I see people coming back. Ready? Okay. No more feedback. Sorry, folks. Yeah, okay. Volume on, though. Yeah, so I can't hear a thing. I can't hear a thing. Oh, so I was just turning my volume off. That's pointless. Well, that is half of the problem. Okay. I see Jeff is back. Uh, Heather, our timer is not back. Do you have a, you want to pull out a timer? Yeah. Uh, do a timer. Um, uh, That's Avo. Yeah, which, uh, yeah. Uh, I can't pronounce your first name. Dr. Yeah, Sarsen. yeah, Yar. Yar. Um, Yar, Yar, you're going to talk or is Lawrence going to talk? Uh, Lawrence is going to pitch and I'll be here for questions also. Okay, are we driving or are you driving? Lawrence, uh, Lawrence drive. Okay, so you're going to want to share your screen, I think, then, Lawrence. Do you, so the share button is, I see you found it. Yeah, it's, it's funny. When we started doing these events, like nobody had any idea how to, um, do stuff like share their screens and whatever. So it's uh, it's uh, it's good. Oh, I see you're you're a, a startup health company. How long how long have you been part of with startup health thing? As of yesterday. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, we just got in. Hmm. Hmm. 
I will, I will not say anything on that topic. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, uh, Heather, are you ready? Cool. Uh, I think we have a, most of our judges here. Uh, let me just see. Uh, see Martinez. Atisha, are you here? Anything I'm here. Else? Okay, cool. Uh, very good, Moni. Okay. I'm well, here. Yeah, I see. I see. Okay, so, uh, so uh, whenever you're ready, you can take it away, Lawrence. Great. We're AvoMD, developing a platform of clinical pathways for point of care diagnosis and treatment by doctors for doctors. COVID-19 presents an unprecedented knowledge challenge to physicians. The latest guidelines to help physicians treat COVID-19 are delivered in bulky PDF format that can be dozens, if not hundreds of pages long. They're coming from a variety of different sources and they're being updated frequently. This makes it next to impossible for the physician to get the information he or she needs to treat the patient at hand. And this is called the knowledge challenge. And while COVID-19 represents an acute example of this issue, it's happening across all of medicine, leads to substandard patient care, wasted healthcare spend, and medical errors. This is a public health crisis that COVID-19 has made even more urgent. Here's where, here's where AVOMD comes in. Our technology just delivers the information updated that the physician needs to know to treat the specific patient at hand. So here's our COVID-19 pathway. Let's say a patient comes in, the patient is pregnant, the physician suspects COVID-19 in this case, also believes this is a PUI, but double checks for that definition, and then in seconds gets access to summary recommendations from the CDC, WHO, and other societies on what to do for testing, infection control, and other special considerations given that this patient was pregnant. And we're developing these pathways not only is for COVID or COVID related protocols, but really our platform is um, specialty agnostic and we're, we're deploying this across different departments and clinical circumstances. It's worth noting that going forward, a lot of protocols and workflows are gonna need to be updated and changed to take into account uh, COVID-19 considerations. While that was just the user side of our platform, we have this authorship side as well, where we're working with physicians and residents at our institutional partners that for CME credit, upload and convert the uh, existing protocols into our app format, where it's then reviewed by an institutional editor for accuracy and then made available to those users. Uh, on the back end, we have a software tool um, that enables the creation, review, and updating of this seamlessly uh, with a high degree of automation and ease of use. There are two flavors of competition in this field. One are the actual educational vendors providing the primary literature they're great for helping physicians learn, but they really aren't meant for point of care use. On the flip side, we have the workflow flow oriented solutions like those that are based in the EHR that are great at automating physician decision making, but typically lack educational components. And we're both educational and highly designed for the clinical workflow where we can and have integrated with EHRs. And our platform also allows for the hospitals themselves to customize their own protocols. As we all know, healthcare is local. We're selling access to our platform via um, licensed subscriptions, and we're specifically selling to hospital departments and residency programs. Our product has been downloaded uh, to date about 40,000 times. We're on the App Store where we release an MVP in formal usability trials. Physicians have found it to be more usable than Gmail and Amazon. Um, half the authors we've surveyed have been interested in authoring content, and we've gotten great reviews on the App Store and other third-party review sites. Um, we've signed our first commercial term sheet with SUNY Downstate. We'll, we'll be granting, granting licenses to 350 of our internal medicine physicians. Um, we also have a research pilot running with Samsung Medical, the second largest hospital in Korea, as well as a pipeline of other notable hospital and department logos that we're in some late stage discussions with on partnerships and uh, research pilots. The team is like left. So, Dr. Park. Um, he's both the professional developer and a physician at a Harvard hospital. Dr. Saperstein is our CEO, he just finished his residency at Downstate. I'm our CEO, uh, just got my MBA from Columbia. The expanded team includes Yella, who's a master's um, in engineering from Columbia, and Dr. Ong, an informatics fellow and physician at Yale. Going forward, we're raising about just a, over a million dollars in capital to help us complete our product suite, acquire and implement the next million dollars of ARR and support the founders as we all go full time. And then we've gotten about $75,000 in commitment um, and investment from Columbia's venture fund, as well as a $20,000 from Startup Health towards this fundraise. Thank That's you. That's great. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, so uh, questions from 
the judges, the crowd? Pat? Anyone? Um, I'll start. Um, tell me about uh, implementation. Your, your, is your first implementation at Downstate? That's but you, correct. But you had 40,000 downloads. So this is direct to physician consumer? Direct. Yeah, we, re we released just like a prototype on the App Store to see if there was interest. Um, and, right, and so what's, what's the usage rate? Meaning, you know, the attrition rate on apps is notoriously bad. Anything yeah. better than 95% is good. What was your attrition rate like? Um, we haven't even looked at that data uh, because the prototypes we've provided have been to solve like one clinical circumstance or algorithm. And yeah. so that data just isn't really relevant for us at this stage. Yeah, no, I downloaded it and tried it the other day. Um, uh, it seems usable. Um, but really, is it defensible? I mean, it's, it's really just a, a bunch of linked content. Um, what is it? Is, is it something that somebody is there is any protection there for that IP? What's going to yeah. be, what keeps you guys, you know, relevant? Yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of twofold. One is the, the, the usage of the authorship tool. That's the, the, the way that the content gets on there from the institutions. Um, basically, that allows the protocols to be developed um, in a way that hospitals haven't seen to date and, and automates and makes that process more efficient. And then not only is it that process that we're automating, but it's the delivery of the protocols and, and how we enable hospitals to deliver the protocols in these usable interactive formats that they, the, all that infrastructure has already been built on our end. Um, and so all the hospital needs to do is actually write the protocols and then they all of a sudden have these extremely interactive usable um, pathways. One before they were using either literally physical binders for their protocols or storing their, their flow charts and their, um, their IP like yeah. on their internet. Oh, this is IG know, yeah. um, so you've been around since 2015. Um, so I'm a little concerned. I guess you're saying that it wasn't, there were no full-time uh, founders uh, before this? Um, so Dr. Park, who's the developer and the, and the physician, has been working on this app and prototypes of it for, yeah, since 2015, but, um, and then uploaded those prototypes on the app store where we got those downloads. Yair had not joined until early 2018. I joined at the end of 2018 and we just started our time commitment like three weeks ago, so. Right. So, um, so it was, it was a, a side project and now it's getting center stage. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, other questions from anybody other than me? Martin? Yeah, I mean, Alex, like, uh, hi. Uh, this is Monty. And, you know, Alex, like you, I'm a little concerned about any type of solution that just packages, you know, protocols. Uh, I mean, you know, you could uh, do a um, a document share in ways and have uh, active interactive links and deliver protocols, which a lot of hospitals do. <clears throat> um, there has to be more to it. Plus, protocols that are integrated into the point of care, again, EMR integration as they're typing in information for a patient and then it gives them guidance in the system as opposed to having to reach to your phone every minute. Um, well, you know, it, having it kinda, built funny, I've, I've used it. It does kind of do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah I'll, or, or do you guys want to respond to this concern? Yeah. I mean, I'll just give you like a, a very simple use case that we're like in discussions with the Yale pediatric department where they've developed their own protocols, but, they're delivered in flow charts and are being stored in eight different internal locations. Um, and they see our tool uh, as a way to make their protocols actually usable and accessible to physicians um, in this like easy new and interactive format. And so, you know, that's a value, that's a value add that we're providing Yale in, in that example where um, we, you know, we will increase adherence to these protocols that they've spent so much time working on, but just haven't been able to support them. Um, are you doing a study at Downstate or wherever you're rolling it out to see seconds like, left. Uh, how much time is saved and yeah, you know rates of protocol use? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what we're going to be measuring um, at both Downstate and and Samsung, um, where you know we're looking at physician efficiency. We're also going to be measuring specific outcomes and seeing if those are impacted, um, as well as looking at educational value to see if physicians are learning using our tool as well. So um, both the clinical and the educational components are things that we're focused on and going to be measuring. 
Okay. That's great. That's four minutes. Thank you very much. Okay. Once again, if you have questions uh, that you didn't get to ask, um, please put them in the chat box. And uh, I don't know if Lawrence and, and Yael were here before, but we ask that you um, answer those questions also in the chat box. Um, judges, if you'll take a second to fill out the, uh, the form uh, for uh, number six, AVO MD. So if it doesn't say six on the top, then you're not on the right one. And if you want to queue up the, the next contestant, um, great job guys. Uh, it sounds like you're making real progress. Uh, I'm glad to hear that you've gotten some investment. And uh, I don't know if you know, but Startup Health started up out of Health 2.0 New York. Um, so we're old friends um, and collaborators and what have you. So, um, so next up would be Illuminate Health. Actually, Illuminate. Illumi is this spelled correctly? It's Illuminate? Illuminate. Illuminate. It's oh. Recovery Coach on the Oh, oh, yeah. It's got a different yeah, name. Yeah, that's Illuminate Health. Okay, good. So, Varun, that's you? That's me. I'll, I'll share my screen and uh, drive. That's okay. Yeah, I, I didn't recognize you from the, uh, from the different name. Uh, so, I'm going to drop the, uh, the link to your project in the chat box. For anybody who's interested, you can actually, it's actually, it's got videos and, you know, if, if you haven't been to medsoda.com, it's like a crowdfunding site that focuses just on healthcare innovations. Um, but it's not just funding, it's about getting the, the feedback and, and, and what have you. And actually, the judging form that you guys are using, the Google version that you're using, is really just the same as the instant feedback box on, on the project pages. And it's what our judges use uh, online usually. Um, I just didn't want to have to have to worry about people not being able to log in during the middle of this. So, so we gave you the easy version, but it's the same thing. So if anybody wants to get involved in the project, like follow, try, pilot, adopt, donate, invest, or just give them your thoughts, um, please go to that link and you can check it out. Um, okay. So enough plugging for the platform. Um, uh, I assume that that probably wasted enough time that all the judges finished their judging. Um, so now uh, we'll hear about Illuminate, or also known as Recovery Coach, and Varun. Uh, I think last name Kupal. Alex, are you able to see my screen? Varun Goyal. Yes. Yes. Yes, we can all see your screen, and I will shut up now. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Varun Goyal. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Illuminate Health. We're a startup based in Indianapolis, Indiana, and we were in operation since 2017. Um, so we started with a simple hypothesis to, to develop a consumer-oriented, clinically intelligent tool to enable self-care, starting with medications, um, while providing connectivity to clinicians. Um, and as we all know, everyone's going through the pandemic in their own ways, but it's crucial for people with underlying conditions, um, whether it's chronic conditions, but even more importantly, people that are struggling with addiction or substance use disorder. Um, sheltering in place is quite the challenge for, for people going through addiction. You know, isolation um, is, is really a killer. And I mean, the, the patient population for SUD was challenged to begin with, given stigma and access to care. Um, but the way we actually kind of went about this is really looking at the health literacy aspect of it, as well as focusing in on the fact that 50% of substance use disorder patients have, have at least one chronic medication that they're taking. And majority of them have a history of mental illness for which they're taking psychotropic drugs. Um, and now as MAT treatments are getting more popular, um, you know, medication management becomes more crucial. So, so we took medication management as kind of our foundational element to, to enable that comorbidity management. Um, and over time, taking approaches from the 12th step philosophy along with mindfulness have put together a toolbox of you know, different resources that have been really engaging for patients you know, suffering from substance use disorder. Um, of course, everyone is sheltering in place, and so addiction clinics, behavioral health units at health systems have scrambled to enable different forms of virtual care. Um, and so what we've seen, of course, over time has, has been, you know, high engagement levels of patients, you know, trying to stay on top of things um, and, and really making use of 
what we call the support network in the form of virtual recovery groups, you know, and the way we do that is really enabling group chat. Um, health status monitoring has been really crucial, as all of you know, you know, being able to report on symptoms and side effects that patients are having so that they can be connected to their clinicians and, and be directed for the, for the right level of care. Um, and of course, during times of COVID, you know, we've included symptoms not only for mental health, but also COVID, whether it's chest pain and, and so forth. Um, the wellness activities piece has been really crucial because it provides a content platform almost for motivational readings. You know, if someone checks in and says they're having high level of anxiety, our tool can suggest they try a two minute meditation. Um, and if that doesn't help, they can get connected to somebody. Um, and apart from that, of course, there's, you know, yoga exercises and things like that. Um, and now, of course, all the meetings in terms of AA, Smart Recovery, Narcotics Anonymous and all have gone virtual. But pre-COVID, you know, we had made those available using GPS so people could go to their neighborhood meeting for that social interaction. Um, and of course, it's all a closed loop system in form of connectivity to the care team. You know, now is that a, a group of coaches, therapists and, and so forth really monitoring, you know, how people are doing and, and having a mechanism to, to keep in touch with them. Um, thanks. Um, we've had success at IU Health and, and Volunteers of America in terms of formal pilots, as well as actual commercial rollout. Um, and we're focused on the addiction center and behavioral health market. I'm honored to have a great team behind me with pharmacy and software engineering design strategy covered. And we're now starting to plan for a fundraise because you're looking to expand our go to market um, and scale that up while uh, investing more in our data science capabilities um, so that we can mine a lot of what is. Bro, you're, out of, you're, out of, you're out of time, bro. Okay. Four minutes. Thank you. Well, thank you. Very exciting stuff. Um, so does somebody want to start the questions? Do you have any users on the platform right now? We do. So we, um, we've been live at IU Health since early last year, where we uh, started off in the form of a free pilot and then expanded to five other um, hospitals, part of their behavioral health collaborative. How's that going? What's the retention, attrition, usage? Um... Yeah, so it's been on, you know, ongoing, as you can imagine, especially given COVID. Um, the formal pilot that we had done, which helped us expand over there, had gone really well with over 50% of patients being active on a weekly basis. Um, retention was really good as well, where to your point from earlier, where you know people start dropping off mobile apps after the two day mark and majority of them drop off at the seven day mark, we were showing retention past you know 45 days and, and more. Only 50% though, right? Well, 50% you know, of the total population active on a given week. So, but if they started the program, how, what percentage finished the program? So all of them finished the program. Um, we had about 98% people adopt the tool. Um, so out of, let's say the 100% of the patient population, there were a couple that did not adopt the tool. Um, but off the people that adopted the tool, which is majority of them, um, you know, 50% of them were active on any given day. And then the retention was four times, you know, the published kind of healthcare apps um, numbers. Okay, let me let somebody else ask questions. I'm sorry, somebody else is trying to ask questions? I had something to say for yet right now. It'll come back. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I just wanted to know, I mean, when I presented this to people, they've said, oh, you know, I don't think people will actually use it, you know, like, so versus an inpatient program or, I mean, does this, how do you get people to actually use it? Yeah. So our philosophy is we're basically enabling the, the care management team. So, you know, we're extending that relationship outside the four walls of the hospital. Um, and the very fact that we provide a toolbox and not really a prescriptive approach to, you know, this is all that you're going to use and you're going to use it type approach. Um, that's what's been attractive for patients. So in the surveys we've done, you know, certain patients were attracted by the medication management capability because, you know, over 45% of them were taking meds. Um, a lot of them liked the fact that they could do their daily spiritual reading within the app um, or just be connected to a friend or family member. Um, and, and that's why we kind of 
call this as a toolbox approach where we are taking things from the 12 step, you know, approach to recovery along with mindfulness. So, I, go ahead. so um, on the, the app store, I see you have like three different apps available. Are they not all just in one app or you have to, for your specific issue, you have to download different app? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, the platform, of course, is, is all the same, right? Uh, we built it as a scalable platform where medication optimization is at the core of what we do. But, but really where we've gone has been a holistic engagement tool for the patient, depending on what condition they have. Um, so the first one that we formally piloted with a health system has been in substance use disorder, the one we're talking about here. Um, and then the, the others you see on the app store, um, you know, are, are more in process. So, you know, we are recently recognized by KidneyX for kidney disease management. So you see a transplant app on the app store um, and our core is really exciting. Gotcha. Is it question? multilingual? No, not yet, but we're starting to hear that a lot. So we're starting to work on it. What's your composition look like? Yeah, that's an interesting one because, you know, if you look at pure med management, there's tons of these med reminder apps on the market, right? And we're not trying to be one of them. Um, yet really, our competition to some degree is disease management vendors. Um, where you know they're focused on specific diseases as well as some of the the pop health players but at the end of the day we see a lot of them as really good partners because none of them do medication management the way we do it um and and so you know we're in partnership talks with with a lot of them okay that's it thank you very much four minutes yeah appreciate it guys great job Varun. you're doing important great job. Work. um Thanks. you know I, I i don't talk about it much but my cousin died of an opioid overdose uh, last August, and I was trying to get an app like this out to market and in his hands, you know, um, just before he died. And I had, I was one of the judges in the, uh, not judges, um, mentors in a opioid crisis hackathon down mm. in Lafayette last, uh, 2018, 2019, it's 2018. Anyway, and the winner was a tapering app um, mm -hmm. that, uh, I just couldn't get the kid to sort of focus. He was in, in school still. Anyway, so so we're very excited about what you're doing, and obviously it's you know it's deeply meaningful to me and uh, my brother and other investors um, in the fund and what have you. So no matter what, we're going to talk regardless of how this goes. But so um, so thank you for doing what you're doing. I I do think that there are definitely some issues of getting people to use it. And, uh, and you know, I definitely think it needs to be like a standalone at some point, but that's a whole different discussion. Um, so anyway, so judges, uh, while I've, you know, filled the airwaves or the, the internet, the interwebs with my blathering and stories. Uh, and if you wanna see uh, the story about that, he was actually the guy that Billions was dedicated to, uh, Dennis Shields, um, who's on Real Housewives of New York too. So that guy is the guy that I'm talking about. Anyway, so so yeah, it's, a, it's very sad. Got it. Um, I appreciate anyway. that. Yeah, if I had my way, I'd love for such an app to be prescribed with any first opioid prescription written, right? Because safe opiate usage is so critical. Oh. Yeah, definitely. And he, he never did drugs before that. It wasn't his thing at all. But uh, he had back, back surgery and just went badly. He just never got off them. Um, yeah. But a tapering app, you know, um, you know, or something that, you know, and that's the biggest problem with with, uh, with addicts. They they don't seek help when they should, mm -hmm. um, and they or they won't walk in or do an inpatient program or even an outpatient program. So, yeah. Anyway, um, okay. So if you have questions, uh, please put them in the in the chat box um, and. Uh, if we have our next contestant, and I am your doc. I thought it was a pretty interesting project. Um, right, who's, who's driving on this one? Um, that basically work. Dana? Oh, you're mute. Mute myself. Hey, Dana. Hey. Where, are you, where, are you, where are you calling from? Are you in like Colorado or something? Uh, no, we're based in Seattle, but I live in Asheville, North Carolina. So that's where I'm. Mountains, just different mountains. Yeah, cool. Um, all right, so uh, I guess all the judges, hopefully you filled out your, your stuff for uh, the last one. So now we'll be sure if I am your doc, it's, it doesn't have a number on it, but it says I am your doc. 
Uh, I'll pop the project into the chat box as I've been doing uh, for a lot of these. Um, and Heather, I assume you're ready, right? Okay, so Dana, whenever you're ready to go. It's, I'm Dana Allison, I'm the CEO of Iron Your Doc. It's a HIPAA compliant real-time video consult and messaging platform. And just as a general introduction, I'm Your Doc runs as a native application on iOS and Android, as well as through the browser. We have a validated product with about 10,000 health professionals and tens of thousands of patients registered. Um, and we service the out-of-hospital ambulatory and then long-term care markets primarily. So mobile communication is a seemingly simple solution, but ineffective, archaic communication costs the healthcare sector almost $3 billion every year, including 2,000 preventable deaths. And so these inefficiencies and costs have been exacerbated, of course, by the stresses to the system caused by COVID-19. So now we have sicker patients, lockdowns with decreased patient visits, elective procedures canceled, more patient questions, concerns, coordination. And all is done, all of that is done with a decreased staff force. So at the beginning of the pandemic, the sole focus was on telehealth, 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 the synchronous video visit. But interestingly, we've actually seen a national decline of telehealth use now that in clinic uh, and in person visits have resumed. And while some have kept telemed, most have resumed the business as usual. And this is where I'm your doc stands out from a pretty crowded market. Uh, and the market is currently primed for this change because what wasn't anticipated as much as what traditional or, um, or video only platforms do not address is all the other stuff that healthcare requires surrounding the synchronous visit. And this is also the most uh, costly in terms of time, money and staff burnout. So what I mean by that is all the pre-visit check-ins, post-visit follow-ups, lab test follow-up, prescription refill questions, those kinds of things. Uh, and Iron Doc allows uh, on a single platform to engage the patient at every point of care, not just the synchronous visit, but also the pre-check-in, uh, as well as the post-care follow-up. And this decreases the overall cost of care, care and increases revenue, which of course is important uh, in the value-based system. So this is sort of a, a good example. And we all know what this is like. You know, today, right now, we go to a doctor, we have to get a lab test, Two days later, the, the medical assistant calls us. We don't pick up because no one picks up. So we then call back. And then now the MA, after a 20-minute phone tree, is with another patient. And then they have to call us back just to tell us that our lab result is normal. And so this is a desperate need both for the healthcare professional side as well as what the patients are demanding, which is we talk about my issue through messaging, generally with gatekeepers, not with the doctors directly, although that depends. We have a video consult uh, on the same platform and then two days later I can send the, you know, the outcome of the prescription that they sent me for antibiotics and show them an image that it actually is improving. This is what happens. And every other consumer industry has mastered this um, and an interesting analog in the consumer space of course is Facebook um, to Messenger. So Facebook is the core uh, software product. Messenger is the easy to use, easy uh, to access messenger. And that's really how I'm your doc is approaching the medical uh, profession, which is um, we are the easy real-time push notification messenger and will be integrated with a legacy system that is generally web-based. So then you can have the communication happening quickly while well, integrated in a bi-directional way with an EHR or patient portal or some other software platform. And Amazon does 30 seconds left. Um, and of course, there's enormous amount of value potential uh, with a payer or with a software platform that integrates this kind of uh, communication system. Because it's a SaaS subscription model, uh, low, the margins are high and the costs are low. And so, of course, this matters because of COVID-19. Remote care is essential. And especially in the markets of long-term care that's bending under the pressure of COVID-19 amongst their vulnerable populations, we've seen uh, enormous growth there. Important. That's great. That's four minutes. Thank you. That's great. Great job, Dana. Um, so you're right. It is a crowded market. Tell me about the value prop of you guys versus the Teladocs or, you know, any of the myriad other um, solutions. Or patient portal, Alex. Yeah. Well, that's clear. I, I like the Facebook versus messenger metaphor. Yeah. But I mean, but as me, I'm a practice manager for 200 locations and I've got 1,000 doctors, why am I going to buy yours instead of something else? Yeah, a couple things. One is that um, 
the ease of and frictionless deployment, which is huge to your point, when it's a, a lot of dogs, a lot of staff uh, related, uh, and then a okay, lot of- so that's great operationally, but what if I'm the finance guy? How am I gonna make more money with this? Yeah, two different ways. Even before COVID-19, there were um, new, new CMS codes, which are starting to show parity in the private insurance market, related to store and forward, which is the images that patients can send in, you can bill for now, which usually that is free. The messaging and chronic care management for Medicare Advantage patients, that's a huge one. You can bill up to $128 for that um, for 20 minutes. Is your system generating all these extra super bills, extra charges from utilization? It's all dated and time stamped, including the telehealth um, output that we put in, which has the duration of the call. So when you, with an integrated system, which we have today, you can send that directly to your patient chart and have it to audit. If you use like a Doxy Me or a Zoom, there's no report report on that that you can put into the chart. Right. Um, and so for auditing, that's impossible. Great, good answer. Questions from somebody other than me? <laughs> Sorry, I, I tend to hop the mic. How many, how many hospitals have you um, partnered with or wor are working with now? So we are generally an out of hospital ambulatory care provider uh, and then long-term care. So uh, home health and hospice and skilled nursing facilities. Hi. Um, and we have approximately 420 practices um, or facilities. Other? We see the market uh, turning to long-term care right now because, again, COVID-19 is stressing them so, so much. And they are fully value-based models now because, well, for the Medicare-funded um, ones, which is the vast majority. And so I and your dog can help them not only drive revenue, but diminish the, any of the pains they get for the value-based care and transitions and health readmissions and things like that. Great. So, Moni and Marty, you guys, as the clinicians and hospital leaders, do you guys, what do you, do you have any questions for, for uh, Dana? Well, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, looking at the long-term care market, you know, makes a little bit sense. Otherwise, to me, secure communications is now a commodity. So for the large healthcare systems, um, I, I don't see a differentiator. I, you know, it's not different than Curator or Tiger Text and, you know, what Epic and Cerner are actually building into their uh, mobile platforms. So, Tanner, you know, you if they want to respond to that, uh, Marty, we've we got to let her defend herself. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. No, but he, he's right. I mean, that, that's why I, I think our future is not as a standalone, but uh, integrated into systems that look at um, Epic and Cerner that are building their own and to compete because this is an essential commodity, as you call it. Um, they, they have to integrate something like this. But you're right, long term care, we have a special niche in, um, and there's a lot of payer opportunity there as well because of the value based system. And I like Tiger that. Text, I, I mean, and, and Tiger Text I, I, is only between physicians, right? And not the it, it used to be. Um, I think they've expanded it to patients, but it's a it's an underutilized portion of what they do. I think they just saw that patient engagement was starting to become hot, so they added that. But yes, you're right. That's how it used to be. It is hot. Money, what were you trying to say? No, I was saying I like the I like the focus on you know on the long term care. I think they need a lot of help. And if you could, you know, build in, you know, some pathways even and some additional functionality into it geared towards that particular industry, uh, they can use a lot of help. Focus on that and not on health, not on the hospital, the large systems would be my recommendation, at least initially. Yeah, we, we don't, we've never gone to the large systems because when we came to market about five and a half years ago, Tiger Text, Curator, Volte, they were all doing enterprise systems. So that's yeah. why we, we, to your point, you're absolutely right. Um, and, and the good thing about I'm Your Doc uh, for the long-term care market is that we are one of the most aggressively priced um, with, and their margins are small. And so uh, it's easily deployed and affordable, which is important to that market. All right, that's four minutes. Yeah, I know. I was just, because there was more of a discussion with, uh, with somebody who really understands it deeply. I, I think it's, it's very instructive for all of us to hear about focusing on a particular subsector um, like LTCs, um, having set up, a, I think my fourth company was focused solely on on LTC uh, uh, sales. So it's it's a definitely it's it's a lucrative market, um, and there's enough business there, um, and we can definitely help you with that if you're interested. 
but okay. we'll have a discussion. Um, anyway, so uh, we've got one more team to go today. Um, and I'm going to actually gonna do a little bit more on my, uh, on my sheet here. So if everybody else has, um, has finished their judging, you're ahead of me. Um, and I'm revising some of my answers based upon that last conversation. So uh, it was positive. Good stuff. Um, okay. Good. Okay. So I'm done now. Is everybody else done? Everybody? All right. Okay. Um, some great questions, great commentary. I think, I think we're all learning a lot from this, especially the startups. Um, and, um, and I hope you guys are enjoying the show. Um, so last one, and then uh, I was going to have a panel discussion led by Aline and Eugene about the current state of COVID, um, but uh, Aline seems to have dropped off and uh, Eugene is, uh, had to go to a meeting, which since I'm now an investor in Eugene's company, I'm very happy that he's having meetings with you know, customers, so that's important. So Pat will lead a discussion of, if, as everything yeah, falls to Pat, <laughs> everything that has to be done. Well, to talk, yeah. well I, I'll, be, I'll be doing math. So um, uh, anyway, so, so for the entire amount of time that I'm doing math, Pat will entertain you uh, with a discussion after this about what we think uh, is, has happened and is happening uh, in COVID and, and what we can do to help more or something like that effect. So think about that. And it's an open discussion. Everybody can be involved. It's not just a panel. It's everybody who's here. Um, okay. So, uh, so without further ado, first outcomes is next. Uh, and the last presented this afternoon. Um, and uh, Heather, if you're ready. Uh, and hold on. We, Dinesh, I assume this is Dinesh. Yep, I'm here. Who's driving here? Are we doing... Uh, if you could let me drive. Okay, so you should share your screen. Sure, give me a minute. Um, so Dinesh Gambier has been a member of our community for, I don't know, like 10 years. I mean, I first met you a long time ago. Um, and uh, he's had a number of different uh, projects. I think you actually, you won one of our challenges, I would say like three years ago? Yep, absolutely. And, that was a great win. Yeah, it was good. Well, well, we can talk about that later. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so he's a success story. You know, it's, it's also one of the good ones that got away, you know, because we didn't have very much money in the fund in the beginning. It's actually just my money. Um, so then a ton of other people came in and now we can invest more. So if we, you know, we missed a lot of amazing opportunities, including Dinesh's uh, last company. Um, so, uh, so let's hear about his next one and maybe we won't miss it this time. And, um, and so whenever you're ready, Heather. I'm ready. So thank you, Ms. Starter. Today we're going to talk about health bots. Uh, health bots provide on-demand scalability for medical disaster operations. Um, one minute, folks. I'm Dinesh Gambier. I'm the founder of First Outcomes, the firm that produces health bots. As Alex said, I have two prior startups with uh, pretty good exits. And today we're going to talk about the third one. When emergencies occur, whether it's COVID-19, Hurricane Katrina, hospitals face an influx of patients coming in, and they typically free, have to free up beds to deal with these emergencies. So they need to discharge patients as soon as possible and free up their nurses. Health bots help them do this, and I'm going to show you how health bots work. So of course, we have our disaster. In a disaster, the hospital system will discharge their patients, whether as with COVID-19, they discharge them to hotels or they're discharging them to home care. Normally they would assign a nurse to call each patient every day and check on their status, sometimes multiple times a day. With our system, you activate the bots. And with us, it doesn't matter if you activate one bot or a million, we are scalable as AWS is scalable. So they can have as many bots as they want. Each bot knows everything about the patient that's recorded in the EMR. And the bots will reach out to the patients according to the means that make sense for them. If they don't have internet, they'll reach out via voice. 22% of the folks in the US do not still have internet. So either via text or voice, they'll ask them 
what's going on with them, whether it's their blood pressure, whether it's their temperature, and most importantly, they'll ask them questions. Are you doing well? Did you understand your discharge question? Uh, uh, sorry, your discharge instructions. And if they have a problem, if they have an issue, then the bots will immediately hot transfer the patient to a triage nurse so they can be taken care of. So by this means, we free up a lot of nurses and we will allow the hospital systems to monitor as many patients as they want. Our pricing is part of the offering. And for the hospital systems, the first year is free. And if you want to use them for transitions of care, you're discharging patients out of the hospital, it's not a disaster, there's no charge. As you scale up, we really want to get to the 150. So a nurse calling a patient, the cost is about $16 per call. We're down to $1.50 per call. So less than one tenth the price of a nurse. Health bots are part of a family of bots of digital employees that we are currently deploying uh, to two health systems, I'm sorry, to two practices, large group practices, and we have a third one waiting. So we signed our first contract in January. We deployed our first bot in April. Uh, our second client, Metro Community Health Centers, came on board in May, and we went live with the second bot, the visit bot, and health bot, the third one we're going live with at the end of uh, August. All of these bots had to be in before the fall because these are in preparation for a second wave. And these health systems, I'm sorry, these group practices signed on specifically for this reason. 30 seconds left. I'm done. Great, that was great, thank <laughs> okay, you. So that's gonna be added to your Q&A time. Great job, Tanesh. You, you can you. definitely see the effect of a practice entrepreneur. What, so what's a visit bot? Is that a different thing than the health bot? Sure. So a visit bot is part of our offering. So practices are actually using Zoom. Zoom has a lot of uh, problems. They're also using Google Meets uh, and as well as Microsoft Teams. So we wrap around that. We actually put in all of the um, tracking that's necessary. We allow the patients to come in and do on-demand scheduling. And then our bots go out, remind them, help them to log in because certain patients do have trouble logging into Zoom. And so the bots will actually help troubleshoot the uh, connectivity, make sure they're logged in. And when they're in the visit room, they'll go in and ask them questions that a medical assistant would ask, such as what is your weight, what is your height, temperature, and record that into the EMR. The, uh, so basically, again, when you're deploying an emergency occurs, what we want is if health bot detects that it's not an emergency, but the patient needs to be seen, the visit bot will automatically set up an e-visit. And the care so, bot actually monitors whole populations, make sure that even when it's COVID or any other um, disaster that all care, which is necessary, for example, if they're on dialysis, they get their dialysis, that they don't miss their um, key checkups. So CareBot takes care of that. So they all work uh, together to give you that disaster capability. But also in non-disaster, they actually extend the practice so the practice can take on more patients and take care of them. Okay, so that was a long answer. Um, does anybody else uh, have questions? Yes, um, what's the patient's reaction to this and how do you know that it's necessarily accurate? So let's, uh, just give me one minute. I'm gonna just switch um, screens, okay? So I'm gonna share my complete screen so I can switch between uh, displays. So just stand by me, okay? Mm. So you spun this up pretty quick, Dinesh. How long have you been working on this project? Uh, two years. So. We signed our contract, as we said, in January, we had a prototype in place, but we're going very, very fast. Our customers are actually pushing us. Uh, and as I said, we have a third customer waiting, but we don't commit to customers because they all wanted before September for this third customer. We'll only take them on after September, after well, these two practices are alive. Dinesh, how are you measuring engagement here? Mm -hmm. that they actually talk to the chatbot, right? That the chatbot reaches out to the patient and the patients actually are able to converse with the patient 
and don't leave, they don't ignore when the chatbot reaches out to them, that they actually are happy to talk to the why is yours? Boss. Why is yours so much better than the industry average? Uh, the voice boss have been incredibly effective. Um, uh, so I'm sorry. So each of these bots has a voice, conversational AI in, in terms of voice. So they can actually talk to them within a limited domain, just like they would talk to a care coordinator or a nurse. And we train them every night. So it's just what you're seeing is close to six months of training, getting these bots to this point. So we hit 90% uh, last month and every month we've been improving. So why are you just dealing with practices? Why not big pop health uh, DOH type stuff? We are going to get to that later on. The practices, we're signing contracts in less than two months, uh, actually speeding up with and they're, they're anxious for us to implement with large systems. As you know, Alex, it takes time. 30 seconds left. So I, so I have a quick question. Um, are, are the physicians just your own physicians or are they part of a hospital network? They are part of a hospital network or they're part of a group practice. And then does that, does, does that data integrate with their EMR as well? Yeah, we, we, push it in, we push it into the EMR and we extract things from the EMR so we know everything about the patient. Got it, perfect. Thank you. That's great, that's four minutes. That's Sorry. great, thank you. I have you. a question for Martinez. Marty, would you use this? Okay, same question for Moni. <laughs> well, I, I, I think I'm going to, um, not respond to this one considering I'm an advisor for Dinesh, so I don't want to. Don't oh, want to oh. take this. <laughs> That's <laughs> don't good want to know. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but I, the fact that you're an advisor for him uh, is, uh, you know, indicative that you do believe in this idea. So, uh, I would hope so. Um, okay. So, uh, so I think that concludes this portion of our of our. Uh, of our presentations and such. Great job, everybody. I got to say, it's very inspiring, very exciting to see such amazing companies. Uh, we had uh, over 80 companies uh, start their applications. We know we make a very difficult application on the MedStarter site, and that's intentional. Um, we don't want uh, people who are just playing games. So we get a higher quality of company, um, and, and you can see that here today. And then we actually, we disqualified about, uh, eight teams because they had already won one of our contests in the last uh, um, year. So, um, so, but that is the kind of people, people see that when they're part of one of our contests, they get a lot of exposure and we encourage them to be part of all the contests uh, until we invest in them, at which point we have other ways to promote them. Um, so for those of you who have been playing the home game and doing the, the finals uh, scoring sheet, um, please make sure you put in your address if you want one of these t-shirts. Um, I think we're out of extra smalls for women. Um, yeah, and extra larges for men. And extra larges for men, but so do your closest other size. We should probably put on that on this form. Um, although we can do a reorder, I guess. Um, also, we'd like to know what you think we could do better. If you're not filling out the form, feel free to put that in a direct message to Pat or myself um, or Heather. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to see us do, we're going to actually do a general challenge uh, coming up next. Uh, so we've done, this is our sixth uh, war on COVID pitch contest. I think we're ready to do something other than COVID. Um, and there's a lot of demand for, for us to keep doing those other types of contests. Plus, we don't just want to in, in, invest in COVID solutions. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so we're, we're, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so with that, um, if all the judges um, will finish uh, entering in all of their answers and um, you can actually have it send you a copy of your responses and click submit. Um, I'll start crunching the data while you guys can talk about COVID. Um, uh, mute yourself and- I'm gonna mute myself and I'm gonna- Turn it on so I can talk into the Yes, I'm gonna mute. Before I say mute, in case anybody leaves before I get back, I just wanna say thank you. And I'll be about 10 minutes doing this. All right. All right. No, you have to. Oh, they turned up here. Turn your volume off.
All right, I guess I'll leave the panel discussion. Sorry, I don't have something more prepared, but I did not realize I was going to be leading this until like an hour before the event. But that's like every other panel discussion with our judges, I believe. Um, so with everything reopening and these protests, do you guys think that we're going to get a second wave of COVID earlier than September that like was predicted? <laughs> Wait, Patrick, what was your question? Sorry, you broke up a little bit on my end. Do you think we're going to have an earlier second wave of COVID now that everything's opening up and we have these protests going on? I don't think, I mean, at least from what I read, I don't think it was from the protests from the 26 states that are getting, um, well, I, don't, are, I mean, just from like the states. I don't know. I'm not going to speak because I'm going to speak on behalf of the physicians, <laughs> the biomedical engineer on, in me does not know any clinical stuff, but um, it's just what I read. Are there any questions in here left? <laughs> <laughs> can, we get, can we get an update? Yeah. Where's she when you need her? <laughs> Well, unfortunately, what we're seeing in other countries, um, you know, once you open up and even in other states like Florida, which is going, which has gone into phase three already, you know, as you open up and as people are getting, you know, a bit looser with the restrictions and are not adhering to even the recommendations of wearing masks and staying six feet apart, uh, unfortunately, we do see and there will be, you know, a rise. Um, hopefully we'll, you know, the systems are better prepared and as long as we can, you know, keep the hospitals, you know, from being overrun, you know, I think we'll be fine. But, you know, that all depends on how loose people are going to get over the summer. Yeah. Do you think now that we went through the first wave, like, we're going to be more prepared for the second with new, like, telehealth and stuff like that, so it's going to be easier to manage, or do you think we really haven't learned our lesson yet? I guess it depends who your president is. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't think, you know, this is, you know. I don't, trying I, to get I don't into politics. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we should bring politics. I don't think it's a political no, issue. I, I think our, our providers are better prepared. I think therapeutics to treat the solution is 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 coming out are coming out uh regardless i don't think there will be a vaccine in the short term we don't just develop vaccines you know i think it's a lot of wishful thinking about a vaccine but as far as treatments as far as experience with the disease and using various uh, anti-inflammatory drugs and other drugs that are shown you know positive impact it's like any other disease we're getting better at managing it and I think we're fine. I think there was a, a fall security in ventilators. Uh, ventilators did not do what they needed to do. Uh, 80 plus percent of patients that were put on ventilators didn't come off ventilators. So th those weren't the miracle cure. But, you know, certainly treating patients, detection, testing, all of those things, you know, are coming into play. And, you know, we'll be better at it. Uh, so I think we'll, we'll ride through it much better. How does uh, Spain look, Aileen? Is there? Oh, she's in front. Oh, she's in front. She's actually falling asleep, though. Oh, so she's not here. OK. Um, sorry, guys. <laughs> I didn't have that much prepared. Has anybody learned any, been learning any new skills and stuff since uh, lockdown and put their time to some good use? I learned how to ride a bike after 20 years. What? Really? <laughs> you never learned how to ride a bike? I mean, I knew how to ride it. I just haven't rode or ridden a bike. English was a se second language, so you can't blame me. Ridden, rode a bike in 20 years. So when my girlfriend's eight-year-old asked me um, a couple weeks ago, I couldn't say no to her. Shh, let's just say I got it after a couple of tries. Yeah, isn't the expression... Uh... You never can forget how to ride a bike. What is it? You, uh, you can't. You can't. Except the brake wasn't working, so <laughs> it was. It was a little interesting. <laughs> I don't know. Does plumbing count? Plumbing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the local. I became a handyman. You know, fixed my garage door, changed the 
door opener, painting. <laughs> yeah, I spent my free time trying to learn how to play the, the banjo, so it's not going that well. Yeah. I felt like the guitar was too mainstream, so I was like, let me do something a little different. Did you already know how to play the guitar? No. And you learn how to do websites? Yeah, yeah I learned how to do websites. Really that work. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going a little slow, folks. Usually I have all these formulas, you know, built, but don't have them today. Okay, so what else do we want to talk about? Uh, what, what do you guys think we could do better in these uh, contests? What's the next kind of theme you want for our contest? Not a pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sort. Be a couple more minutes. I, I'd be interested to hear from physicians or clinicians to see what 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 are some issues you guys are having in the hospital during times like this. Katie, how is our residency during all this residency? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Katie, don't worry. That was me at three o'clock. <laughs> She's having her dinner. Okay. So Wait, you're, you're muted. Um, I don't know which one you have. I'm not a physician, but. Um, I was working with Downstate Medical Center. We were studying how they adapted. And one thing that's become really clear is how big of a difference there is between institutions as far as their IT. You know, some institutions have like huge IT systems that run smoothly and they have enough stuff to do it all and everything. And then others just don't have that. So they were coordinating things with spreadsheets and stuff. and that's, um, I feel government hasn't really taken that into account enough. Okay, I don't have my banjo to give you a demo, unless you want me to do it in air banjo lesson. I, I didn't know what the banjo was about, but to, uh, responding to Yalini, I think that, I mean, just from what I've um, experienced working with hospitals, the Hospitals that have innovation departments, their IT department seems to be more like, I want to say first world country and the, and the hospitals that don't have innovation departments, they tend to be like third world country um, situations. So I, I can see that. Um, and there it's very, it's hard to innovate in the, because then the IT department is overwhelmed and they don't want you to give them extra things mm -hmm. to do. Um, <laughs> Dinesh, is it, has it been hard to integrate your health uh, bots during the COVID? Um, EMR vendors are always pretty difficult to work with. Um, What's amazed me is how hard the practices and systems are working to help you make things happen. Did you use like some robotic process automation tools to develop your bots? Uh, no, everything is uh, designed from the ground up by ourselves. Uh, the tools out there are pretty brittle, whereas mm. our things have to yeah, they work. Have to be we look at it as a mission critical system for the practices yeah. and the health systems. And we work very hard. So it would be just drop in. Uh, yeah. We basically tell our clients, we'll take care of everything. You don't need to involve IT. It'll drop in and there's no change in physician workflows. So they've been pretty happy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we have results. Um, if you guys are ready for it. Unless you guys want to keep, you know. Uh, no, that's okay. We can get the results. <laughs> that, that doesn't want to moderate anymore. 
Okay, so should I just come over here? Yep. Okay, so um, so very everybody did a great job, and I think it's it's indicative of the kind of thing that um, happens with these these um, contests is that um, you come and you, you present, you do your best, but then you find the holes in it. So I think you know one of the, my favorite projects, even though they raised more money uh, on the platform, um, didn't do that well because he didn't have the clinical validation uh, and the team really built and and we can we can you know uh, talk to you about that and help you with that and that kind of thing that's one of the reasons that people come to these events is to find great ideas to work with so um, so if anybody is interested in any of the projects we encourage you to go to midstar.com go to the COVID showcase say that you want to get involved or mentor or whatever uh, because a lot of these teams they've got great ideas but they just need like that one uh, team member or something. I always think of uh, startups like a like a three-legged stool or sometimes more legs depending on how, how far along they are. But that sometimes you're missing a critical team player. So that's so that shows in a lot of these results. So um, so we're going to start out with the crowd favorites. So these are projects that didn't get first place, uh, first, second, or third, but but did well on the platform and did pretty well in the scoring. So we like to think that everybody wins in these. And so, so there's a tie in the very close uh, scoring between Hiko and Armhug. So both of you will will uh, will talk to you a little bit more and see what we can do to help you guys along, um, whether it's in manufacturing or more promotion. Um, so we're, we're looking forward to working with Dale and and Genesis. So great job, guys. Um, and third place is uh, is uh, uh, Voom uh, is the recovery solutions uh, the Illuminate. Thank you. Illuminate Health. So great job, guys. We'll definitely be talking to you and uh, you'll be getting an email from Pat asking you for your due diligence documents so we can go a little deeper and evaluate you guys for investment. So great job. Uh, very excited about that project personally, just obviously for my family story um, uh, and, you know, for uh, other issues. Um, second place, uh, no surprise here. You know, I think as soon as he said, I sold my last two companies, a lot of people just, you know, I think people always look to, to the, um, the, the second time, third time. Found it. Exactly. Cause he the should. veteran, the veteran. The what? The veteran. The veteran. That's yes, exactly. Well, it's, it's a way to sort of hedge your bets. And a lot of the companies that we invested in, they're not, they're not first timers um, mm -hmm. or they're, or somebody came in who wasn't a first timer and helped them get past those early hurdles. Um, so, uh, so health bots with Dinesh Gambir uh, came in second place. So great job, Dinesh. We're gonna we're gonna try to catch you this time, not miss you this time. So we'll talk. And first place <laughs> is Swati and Light Sprite. So great job, you uh, you gamified uh, something in health, uh, which uh, is good to see good progress. So everybody's a winner though in MedStarter contest. We're very excited about all of you. The projects are still all live on MedStarter. We do encourage you to try to get other people to get involved in it because we actually don't just invest in companies that win our contest. We invest in companies who do well on the platform. So, um, so for example, even though that uh, antiviral fabric didn't win the contest, I am very interested in them. I do have a background in fabrics and we actually did invest in one clothing startup already and are working with another um, disinfectant uh, company for these restaurants uh, that goes into the HVAC systems. So it might actually be a nice co-sale. So there's a lot of synergies you get um, when you have a ton of companies that are working together and already in hundreds of hospitals and selling into movie theaters and every other location to get into COVID solutions. So, um, so you know, if you even got to these finals, it's fantastic. You're, you know, you already made the cut um, in a lot of ways. So we'll be in touch. And, um, and I thank everybody, all the judges, um, you know, that took time out of your valuable day, valuable time out of your day, <laughs> and who stayed late for work. So thank you, Pat. And thank you, Heather, for, you know, your timer. I like the new timer, Heather. Um, and all the startups and all the entrepreneurs who are doing new and different things. Feel free to reach out to each other through the MedStarter platform. You can always do that. There's a contact system. Now, if you're a MedStarter mentor like Yelini and Atisha, Moni, and you're in the system, you actually don't have to ask if you can talk to somebody. 
right? Um, so it's like on LinkedIn, if you buy the premium access, you can talk to anybody without asking permission first. So that's one reason to be a MedStart or mentor, but it also means that you can also reach out to any of the teams and it goes directly to their email um, and you guys can have a conversation through the system. It's also one of the things that we watch uh, metric wise, we don't actually read the content, um, but, uh, but to see who is engaging and who is talking back and forth to each other. So I think I've said pretty much everything. Yep. Great Good job. job You're going to expect an email from Heather and or Pat um, and scheduling for your due diligence calls and what have you. So um, thanks again. Great job, everybody. And great job. Thank you. Thank you. Great Thank you. Thank you.